Yo. Yo. Is that better? Is that better? That's better. All right. Cool. Yeah, man. Good. Yeah, guys. So what's going on, man? You still in uh still in Beirut? Yeah, we haven't had many explosions this week. Oh, oh geez. Geez. Well, that's good. Explosions this week. Christ. Um, yeah, it's been pretty quiet actually this week. Yeah, I've I've been seeing the fucking decline of Britain still in the headlines. I was I was telling Brett here about the uh, <laughs> over three thousand people arrested for offensive comments in a year. That's crazy. Ray, I haven't even seen that. Yeah, that's mm. crazy. How legit? Wait, where where was that from? It's all throughout England. Like, I saw all throughout the. Oh wow. Yep. Yeah, we live in a bit of a police state now. Like, if you say anything that's not politically correct, especially if you aim it at Islam, you're gonna get like a knock on the door from the cops. Holy shit! Wow. You can't even fly a British flag. Yeah, if you fly a British flag out your window, you're gonna get a knock on the door. Are you serious? Take it down. It's offensive. You can't. Yeah, you you can't serious, have yeah. that. Ugh. Can't fly the flag. And yeah. and the other. That's ridiculous. The other funny headline I saw was uh, <laughs> was it was basically how. I don't know why I'm laughing. I don't know why I'm. Laughing. The other thing is that there's people making the point that uh you know if a man tries to holler at a girl it's you know misogynistic you know whatever whatever, but Muslims left and right are being let off with rape. Where it's like, British men can't even come on to a girl and be like, oh, hey, beautiful, without feminists getting their panties in a bunch. But Muslims, it's just like, oh, yeah, he raped a girl, it's all right, just let him off. That's why I'm converting. <laughs> wow! <laughs> you know, I, oh! I've constantly thought about that, where I'm like, I, if I just, yeah. you know, if I was desperate to get hey. laid, I'd just have to convert and go to England for a week. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. You can just grab any woman you want, stick a barker on the head. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm surprised, Harvey. Can, you, can, you can brand them, like, just brand them. <laughs> and yeah, it's all good. I, I'm surprised <laughs> Harvey Weinstein hasn't used that as a defense yet. Oh, yeah, right. Weinstein so converts defense. to Islam. Yeah, yeah, and I think the <laughs> thing is a good idea. I'm sorry, girls, but <laughs> Islam's got something right there. <laughs> oh, shit. But um, yeah. Since since I brought it up, might as well might as well go in on uh Weinstein for a bit. Have you Damn. been? Keeping up on the uh, Hollywood crumbling amidst the sexual I had scandals? I to because uh, my friend's dad's been named in it. Oh. Really? Yeah, you know, don't you? I don't know what... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Ol Oliver Stone, yeah. So I want to comment on that one first because I don't know what you guys think. But uh, I think it's like uh, Anthony Kamara said, like it's like Hollywood Jenga. Yeah. Like, you're just pulling all these names out, and eventually it's just going to collapse at some point. Yeah. You know... So I think with, with Oliver Stone, it seems to be three accusations. One, you can't find anything about. Like, there's, I can't find any details what the accusation actually is. Uh -huh. The second one is a play... One of those play bunnies. You know, those playboy girls. Yeah. And it's at the Playboy Mansion. And Oliver Stone graped her breast. So it's like, all right, is that really... I don't know... Ah. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm prepared to let that slip, really. You're yeah. at the Playboy Mansion and you don't grab any tits? Yeah. 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 Okay, that's fair play. You're a Playboy. You can't get into that kind of role and then... Hugh well, Hefner would like probably tell you to grab object. a tit. Like, well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. If you if you compare it to well, this... I'll put my hand up. I've grabbed a few boobs. I was going to say that. You know, I, I've been drunk at parties, and, you know, you're talking yeah, yeah. to a girl, you get a little touch, and then they move your hand away, or if they're for it, you keep going. I mean... At, at yeah, I've done it as a joke before after a couple of drinks you end up grabbing the girls boobs. And, and there was a point where you know you, you sort of found those boundaries with your hands and they would let you know if it wasn't welcome or not but now we're in this day and age of like we need a verbal consent contract before like i saw it paul i saw one of these new sex robots since we were talking about them in a prior video where feminists have now made one where it will alert the police if you don't ask the sex bot for consent Oh, my. You, you gotta be joking. Man. No. I'll, I'll send you the article in a bit. Holy shit. How many men are gonna get done for raped when a robot says no? <laughs> right? <laughs> how, how do you rape a robot? Oh, my God. Yeah, well, I guess that's uh, how, you know... i now, boys. 
Yeah, my 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 couch is probably gonna press charges on me. <laughs> yeah, what about if I don't ask the melon? <laughs> you, Why is it just limited to robots? You want you want to hear a, a funny story? What about my sock? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You know that that reminds me the I met. If Lucy. I use a made in India sock, am I gonna get called a racist? <laughs> 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 That's it's you you colonial you colonized, colonized the sock. The sock. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, actually, the funny thing is, is I tell people all the time the story about how I met Lucy Lou at Stop and Shop. Oh, yeah. The, the part I tend to leave out is that I was with an ex-girlfriend and a friend of mine, and we were online looking at a homemade sex toys, and one of them was like, oh, yeah, you should w microwave and drill a hole in a cantaloupe and fuck it, and it supposedly feels great. Whoa. So... The whole reason I was at Stop and Shop when I went to meet Lucy Lou was to buy a cantaloupe to stick to my stick dick in. Johnson. Yeah, yeah. For my you ex can get those. You can get those pussies, can't you? Those uh, things that Joe Rogan used to sell. Oh, the pocket the pussies. Ones. The I I yeah. ha remember we were talking about this Why in the last one? video, and I put up a link where if people bought one, it would support the show. Huh. Oh my god. So I I could do that again. New World News Network, brought well, to you anyway, by... we've massively digressed from Oliver Stone, so... <laughs> yeah, let's get, yeah, yeah, let's back, get back, back to Hollywood. Back he grabbed a tit at a Playboy mansion. Okay, it's not good behavior, but, I mean, I'm not going to hold that against the guy. It's not earth-shattering. I, I, I think, call me a cunt, I know I'm going to get so much hate letters from women, but if you're a Playboy girl, you're pretty much an elite prostitute, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking you of are. which, Kaya Jones came out and said the Pussycat Dolls were... Uh, yeah, were... I want to talk about that after, but the next sexual harassment was he was at some party, some blonde turned up to a movie premiere, so it was a movie premiere, and mm. then he goes, why the fuck did you bring your girl, your boyfriend for? And apparently that's sexual harassment. Ah, uh, was, he, was he saying it facetiously? Was he just joking, or...? I don't care how he said it. It's not sexual harassment. That uh, well, no, no, no. I mean, like, because, uh, like, was he like joking, like, because, like, you know, it's like, if you. I don't know. I just read statements. So it was one, one. It was three accusations. One, I can't find anything about. Oh, this was all on a. The I second see. one is that stupid Playboy mate. Mm. And I don't trust Playboy girls. I'm sorry. I don't think they're necessarily honest. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, you know, I was gonna say. And even if they are being honest, like. This is a bit of a sob story, but if you don't know, Brett, I was, I'm like massively underweight, like gigantically underweight. Mm. So my aim has been to, like, to get super fit, and I've been like doing kickboxing like crazy with like champions, Olympians, the whole thing. Mm. So at my size, I'm fighting a lot of women all the time, mm. and it's a, it's a full-on kickboxing class. It's the most full-on one in the martial arts. I'm yeah. grabbing tits all the time. Sure. I'm grabbing ass all the time. Sure. It could easily be misinterpreted. Yeah. Wow. Well, and you know, I I was gonna it, say it's risky as fuck. Cause now I get worried because it could be easy mis misinterpreted. If someone goes, "Oh, why are you grabbing my daughter's boobs?" She's fifteen or sixteen. Right. It's like, yeah, I do it all the time. I mean, you don't mean to, but you're gonna. Right. Yeah. I wonder, like, if you're. I mean, because martial arts is self defense and so forth. If if some if a woman is attacking you and you just so happen to implement, you know, use what you've learned in martial arts and you just so happen to graze a tit if that has any kind of recourse no you're to... doing more than that like you're actually grabbing them sometimes because you're doing a lot of grappling you do mixed right. martial arts as well so when you're going for the chest i mean the boobs can often get in the way if you're grappling trying to grab the neck or trying to pull her head down into your knee right you're gonna and and yeah i mean that could easily be misinterpreted yeah well, wow. I w I was gonna say, as far as Oliver Stone, you know, when the uh, when the Catholic Church sex scandal stuff started to break, I had a priest who was a family friend, you know, baptized me, gave me my first communion. Oh, yeah. I he had gotten roped into it, and yeah. some of the accusations that were made at him, I was present for, yeah. and I know that they weren't him trying to molest a this young boy and everything. Well, well, and the other that, thing well, is. I've most pedophiles, well, this guy, this guy, after he left the church over all of this stuff, dated my mom. 
most pedophiles would not date an older woman. They'd move they're to only like... they're only attracted to to young boys. And I mean, some of it was like, you know, we were oversleeping when we were camping at his cabin, and he went to the kid and just pulled the bottom of his sleeping bag to like pull him out of it and wake him up, like. I mean, fucking, like, Jeez. dumb, joking camp counselor type shit. It wasn't, like, him trying to molest the kid and hoping that he was naked and, you know, whatever. Like, but once the ball gets rolling, it's very easy to just sort of bring in other accusations and try to widen the scope. Like you said, once all this Weinstein stuff's coming out, uh, a simple little grab at the Playboy Mansion can get suddenly turned into sexual molestation and everything else if you went if we were if us guys were lucky enough to ever get in there and all three of us none of us grabbed a tit i'd be asking questions on the way home I'd be like, right guys. right you know what i mean we're at the playboy mansion no one got any pussy it's Come like on. if you're a fat guy in wendy's you're Come gonna on. get uh you're gonna probably get a baconator you just know <laughs> it's appropriate or not and you'd have to be there to judge whether that's sexual. yeah you have to actually see it but what i want to say is that spoiler alert i'm gonna ruin my script I think it is this Hollywood Jenga. You're seeing which stars you can pull out until it collapses. Yeah. Why wouldn't you throw some legit ones in there? People right. that Clinton wants to take out, why wouldn't you throw Oliver Stone in there? Because he is a bastard to the Hollywood. He did Jeff. All the films he does yeah. are quite anti-government. He did the Putin interview, which probably didn't go down well for the Clintons. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. done a lot of stuff that hasn't gone down well. So why wouldn't you put the Sean Stone family in there? Well, it's, like a, it's as, like a deflection. Look at his son. His son's like a... Could be, just to throw a couple of names in there. I know I'm biased. Because now, I know do, my film, because correct I'm, me if I'm wrong, though, Paul. Sean. Doesn't no, Sean, no. does he still have a show on RT? Right? Watching yeah. the Hawks, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That's a really valid point. And the thing is, it's, I am biased. I mean, I, I'm, I'm name dropping, but I'm really proud. So, like, I get a Christmas card from the Stone family. Like, wow. I have to pinch myself. Yeah, it just shows it's a small world. Sure. And yeah, I just can't see Oliver Stone. He, from what I understand, Sean's been brought up so well. Like, he's one of the nicest gentlemen you see. I can't see his dad being a sexual harasser. I can't see it myself. Yeah, it's a, that, that, that. I reckon he has done inappropriate things. Yeah, yeah sure. but, but again, you know, that's judging against what? Modern feminist standards? Right. or? Yeah, and you would have thought the Playboy girls come out saying that. You, you right. You'd, if the hardest stuff would come out first. That's right. The yeah. stuff you've got. You know what? Like, you know what point? I think this whole sex scandal stuff really, really illustrates, though, as far as in in the scope of conspiracy theories, is you know you always hear people say, "Well, how could they have faked the moon landing? You know that would take so many people, and you know no one's saying nothing, and this, this, mm -hmm. and that, and it's like, well, look at this. This has been." You know, no one really came out and said anything for 20 years. Look at Bill Cosby. People knew no, that. No, they did come out and talk. Loads of people came out and spoke. Well, yeah, they've, they've, they've made little longer. remarks here yes, and there. CNN and... had that, that tape of the bathroom. The press was sat on it for, like, years. Yeah. And said it wasn't good enough. But if Trump says groping pussy, then that's got to be headline news. But uh... if Weinstein's actually... Got a, then that was a police recording. It wasn't a police wire, that woman. Yeah. And then it turns out she was he was trying to do harass her and that didn't make the news yeah so that wasn't newsworthy but if trump just talks about it then that's got to be dealt with it's just yeah. and now you have clinton out saying we elected a sexual predator well this president. is exactly you've and somehow she head. isn't this talking is about, about her husband this is this is about trump that's why i didn't get out before because you had bush it's not gonna let right shit out you right. got clinton next she's not gonna let that out trump's in and now you're seeing hollywood full Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's why I like, uh, there's, uh, I don't know if you're, uh, Martin Scorsese has a movie coming out, uh, 2019, The Irishman, which has, uh, Robert De Niro, Pacino, Keitel, and, uh, Pesci coming out of, uh, retirement. And, uh, Martin Scorsese, uh, t it decided he was going to put the movie out on Netflix, that it was going to be put out as a Netflix original and he had been offered like a lot apparently from what I'm hearing from Hollywood to put it out and he deviated straight from it. He was like, Nope, I'm gonna do it. Netflix gets it, boom, that's that. So I'm wondering if that has anything to possibly do with that or Well Robert De Niro he he had a massive anti Trump campaign. He wants to yeah. punch him out. 
Yeah. Right. Right. And, oh and yeah. It looks like this. This part is hinting at. I haven't read the accusations yet, but they're talking kiddies with Robert De Niro, aren't they? Are they really? Hmm. Yes. Oh, to be honest, taxi not Bobby driver was, D. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty obvious. I always thought it because some of his films were a bit borderline, weren't they? Jeez. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you look at Taxi, taxi Driver. Taxi Driver. Yeah. yeah. Key, key, yeah. Oh, oh shit. No, weird. Bob. Like, oh. I'm not being like big-headed. I wouldn't have done that role myself. Yeah, that... and it would have made me well famous. I would have gone, that girl's too young. Sorry. Well, I know that that movie was kind of like a Hitchcock, like homage to Hitchcock and like a lot of those like French directors and stuff like that that Scorsese really wanted to do. But man, Bobby D. Oh yeah, and and if you look at Raging Bull, I mean, but even like though say, these are just accusations of Robert De Niro. That's it. So it's a legend. Really it... yeah, I got gotcha, you. And they're I gotcha. not watertight either. You know what baffles me though is how these accusations came out against Weinstein and immediately it became bad for his business. Yeah. But yet you have Brian Singer, who we've discussed before, mm. who, I mean, there's legal cases going on still with him of people accusing, of men accusing, a young man accusing him of throwing these Hollywood parties and there being like executives, you know, date raping these kids and running trains on them. And yet, Brian Singer has a new TV show out. He still is involved in all the X Men movies. He still gets work. I like, mean, like I say, I mean, you've got other people. Matt Damon's not going to work again. George no, no, and even Ben Affleck. Yeah. I'm. I almost. Yeah. I. I think this is the DC Comics is going to take a big hit with having Affleck as Batman. Yeah. Yeah. Also, just because I mean, don't ask me why. No, his family history isn't very good either, is it? No. 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 So it's no. fucked up. How many families do reckon it's fucked up? Quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting thing, Paul. I, I saw a theory floating around. And uh, and actually, I'll preface it by saying, Joy Villa just did an interview with Tucker Carlson where she was talking about Hollywood. And she was saying how it, it is very inappropriate. And, you know, you'll have these executives want even a singer to submit like bikini photos to them because they want to see your image. They want to see what they're working with and everything like that. Similar to the Podesta emails where we had everything. It was this big data dump. It wasn't from pulled different sources. You could tell it was all just one big, you know, data file that leaked. When the fappening happened, and you had all of those Hollywood celebrities with their Yeah, that's like the cast couch photos probably to get the role, that they had to send those photos. Yeah, yeah. and Apple, yeah. The, Apple through the whole time has said, no one broke into the iCloud server. Mm. We this, Them telling you that it was the iCloud server that got hacked, and somehow someone was just able to hack that server and then find all these Hollywood people and act as if they got all into all their phones... No, they're saying this. The, all of those probably came from one or two executives who had all yeah, of those photos. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if it's in. It wouldn't surprise me if it's in the contract as well, because Kim Kardashian launched a, a career off a porn tape. Yeah, but Paris Hilton didn't do badly off a porn tape. Yeah. So I don't understand why a porn tape wouldn't be part of your career. Right. Just to get. You know, there's yeah. the there's the site Celebrity Jihad, and they go through and they show pictures of Hollywood starlets, and then show these sort of B-rate porn <laughs> stars that look exactly like those oh, girls, yeah, and basically it. say that some of them they end up they just do a, a decent makeup job on them, so it looks kind of like them, but not really yeah. like them. Yeah. But I mean, some of them like. There's clips they have of the girl who plays Jean Grey in the new X-Men movies where it definitely looks like that bitch was doing porn. Wow. <laughs> so I, a lot of them I've heard, you know, especially once you get to the B-list and D-list and you're not a top, top moneymaker, mm. they they very easily end up going in that direction. Yeah. It, Which brings you on to what you want to talk about, the pussycat doll, because... You're not going to like what I'm going to say, so I'll let you go first. You're not going to like my interpretation of what she Well, I, I was just going to say, you know, that Kaya Jones came out and said it was basically a, a prostitution ring. So, yeah. what was, what well, was your take on it? she said that she... I think she's full of shit. Ah, why? I think she has... I think she has seen stuff and thinks she's causing more damage than good. Ah. Because she... Ha She's just talking in adjectives. She didn't give any examples. She didn't name anybody. 
Yeah. So, so a lot of it's down to me interpreting what you call offensive, what you call harassment. You know, and it's hard to judge, really. Mm, yeah. It just sounds to me like since she's just trying to get on the Alex Jones show, I just think her career could be a bit ruined. And she's yeah. Just going to Trump's popular. Alex Jones is popular. You got a point. And she didn't. She did not reveal anything at all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, That's you're right. Point. She just kind of vaguely, you know. Yeah. That doesn't help, really. Yeah. No, no I, I agree with that. I think if you're going to come out, name the names. Yeah. Say who's involved and what's going on. Now, speaking of naming names, I think it's interesting that Twitter... I think everyone knew that Nicole was a bit of a prostitute, though. Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. when she was in London. I saw a couple of things when she was in London. Like, she, Prince obviously paid to sleep with her and stuff. Really? She was, she was just doing, yeah, because she went round to Prince's hotel room about three in the morning and left at about seven. And you're thinking, if you were dating Lewis Hamilton, there's no way you'd accept that. D it's, it, there's no way you're going to print. You're not going to Prince's hotel room full stop. Right. Let alone fucking three in the morning. <laughs> Jeez. I wouldn't let my girlfriend go, in, even if it wasn't Prince. You just don't go. In Christ. Hotel yeah. Room. No. You just don't meet. You just don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Wow. Holy so shit. I knew there's a couple of other stories about as well, but whenever she was in England, she was always doing that kind of thing. So you just thought, oh, she's a prostitute. Yeah. 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 Well, and I mean, she's the one that always kind of stuck around. Like, the rest of the group was just kind of... Like, they almost seemed disposable, but you knew Nicole Scherzinger was, like, the the main... I mean, yeah. she she was what Justin Timberlake was to NSYNC. Yeah, basically. and you could tell that the Lewis Hamilton relationship wasn't real. You could just see it wasn't real. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm pretty good with body language. You could just tell they didn't really like each other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, some of it, you know, like people say Will Smith... Am I being harsh to that other girl, though? I think she has seen stuff and she does know stuff, but I don't think anything actually happened to her. No, no. No, I, I don't think so either. Now, someone who did, who I, I think this is very interesting, you had um, Rose McGowan. She's been leading the crusade on all of this, and Twitter suspended her for, you know, naming names and going after Jeff Bezos and, mm -hmm. and him running cover for Weinstein. Mm -hmm. And then you also had someone like, I think the name is like Dana Jones, or so, she's a singer, but she accused Seth Rogen of, of molesting her and groping her and stuff. Oh, wow. Now, the other thing that, that bothers me about all of this, and this is... The thing I hate about, you know, the, the way to make sure change never occurs is to broaden the scope of the issue as wide as possible. Right. Where, like, now you even have them, you know, doing these articles being like, oh, well, you know, this is systemic and it's institutional and it's boys being boys and it's this, this. And it's like, no, let's name names. Let's deal with them individually. Let's not make this so... I mean, it's basically like... Colin Kaepernick has an issue with police violence, so he's going to kneel and attack the anthem because somehow that's going to do something to the police? Yeah, no. It's, 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 a, it's a way to <clears throat> just create controversy and make sure nothing changes. It is difficult as well. Like, I'm going to play honest, I'm like so evil. But if I owned a Hollywood film production company and I get all these hot young models and they're completely disposable. And I say to them on a casting couch, right, suck my dick for the film. Am I abusing them? Or are they abusing themselves? Yeah, you gotta... Yeah. yeah. You know, there is a... Uh, a, a again, like, a, a proposition is only a proposition. Right. You are yeah. right. Yeah. It seems like um, they both agree to... Like, I haven't read the actual allegations. Some seem harsh, but some of them just sound like he's a creep. And yeah. they're going to make yeah. being a creep illegal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Cal, I don't know if there's an episode with David Duchovny in Californication that kind of touches on Hollywood, like, and uh, shows like a scene where like a girl goes into a room in front of a bunch of guys and a girl and something, and they uh, they ask her, oh, you know, do you have a problem with? And before they can even ask, she pulls up like her shirt and shows her her tits and. And, and shit like that and then like ends up sleeping with like one of the people or something but uh yeah no it's like kind of a yeah because they're not going to be the brightest girls are they no that's <laughs> yeah yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I I do. I think there's a problem with. And I reckon they do know what's going on. It's not as if people don't know. Yeah, yeah. The mystery this goes on. Sure. Like, where are the parents? Like, honestly, where are they? Where's her friends taking going to the casting with her? I mean, just, yeah, yeah. You know what's going on. If where... they say, "Don't bring anybody. Come by yourself. Come in the secluded room." It's like if you got to that stage, you must know it's going to pull his dick out. Well, now the <laughs> other thing though is. <laughs> Uh, who is it? Kara Devine, the girl who, uh... Well, but, I mean, it's like if I stick my finger out and go, Jamie, pull my finger. You know what's coming next. <laughs> Don't pull finger. Uh, I was gonna say, Kara Devine, she, uh, or Devine, or however you say her name, she now came out, though, some of it is they almost use a honeypot technique, where, like, Weinstein would have another girl there, like an assistant, and be like, "Oh yeah, you know, come to the room, talk to him, this, this, and that," and then would be, and then would be like, "Oh, are you into girls at all? Do you want to make out with my assistant? Do you want to, you know?" And she, she had a very interesting story that was on. Well, let's go. It's, we're all guys. I, I've got no shame. I'll go through all my sexual harassment cases, shall I? Right. I don't know if you get this in America, but in England, the women get trashed when they go out. They get more trashed than the men. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Men, oh, yeah. The, the men act like uh, gentlemen, and the women act like the guys. Yeah. So yeah. They grape. It does happen. They'll play if your dick and grape your dick. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yep. Yep. Right, Jamie so is no stranger to that. <laughs> yeah. Did anyone, like, go, oh, I've been sexually abused? Mm-hmm. Did anyone wake up having nightmares about it? No. Nah. <laughs> I've def I've, yeah I've definitely had a, had a cock grab or two it, it yeah, done to me at the grabs. at the bar it's, it's it's happened you know by feminist standards I I've been raped by a woman so yeah me yeah too. So if I'm, yeah every woman I've slept with got me drunk <laughs> well <laughs> I I had it where I yeah. was staying over at a yeah, coworker I'm more funny when I'm drunk can't I <laughs> I I had it where I was staying over at a coworker's and. Uh, you know, I, I was staying the night. I was out in Kingston. I knew I had, you know, no way to get back home. Mm. Next thing I know, she's coming on to me, playing with my dick, being like, oh, you want me to give you a head? I'm like, no, I, I have a girlfriend. We really shouldn't be doing this. And yeah. she did it anyway. I don't want to do it. And yeah, and she did it anyway. And the whole time, I was just like, eh, I don't want to. No. It's like Michael Douglas and Demi Moore in that fucking movie. But it's like, you know, I just kind of... <laughs> And I mean, why way, did you say no? Yeah, I said no. I said no. A yeah, plenty, why? Plenty of times. And the, and the crazy thing is, is like. Yeah, why would you say no though? Because I was dating someone else. I had a girlfriend. Oh, okay. I didn't want to be a scumbag. Like. That's just about to say it's a bit rude. But I couldn't. I couldn't be like aggressively like no, no get yeah. off of me because I knew I had to stay the night at this woman's house. Yeah. Like she was bringing me back across the other side of the river at you know the next morning and stuff and i had to work with her so it's do you like, think this is do you think this whole thing's gonna spread that it's, it's gonna be hollywood surely the music industry is just gonna be a carbon copy yeah 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 and then it's gonna be washington and again i think it's down to trump you've seen all these pedophile busts left right and center now you're seeing hollywood yeah, Unless yeah. i think if clinton was in you wouldn't be seeing any of this no no it would it would be very tightly covered up covered up it would be very, very nicely swept under the rug. You know. Well, now I guess yeah, unless anyone else has any other remarks on this, what do you, what do you want to get into about uh about Infowars? You got, you got to bring up Eminem quickly. Can't oh you? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! yeah. Like I was telling you, Brett. Yes, Brett... we do some rapping, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, Brett here has has a real interesting take on on the whole thing because he's very uh, tuned in with all the battle rap stuff and everything. And Eminem has a movie coming out about battle rap and and everything. So I'll let Brett give well, you. I think the Democrat. The only thing I want to say is I think the Democrats have showed their true colors and what they're really about, and they got it right. They had the blacks at the back. The white girl at the front with his white privilege shouting for the blacks. Yeah. The blacks have made power, and yes, the white guy standing for them. So at least they had blacks at the back and whites at the front, like it should be. <laughs> yeah. so right. the that, place, yeah. and it's where they did it on the buses. It's the way Eminem did it in this video. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, it's. Uh, I could tell you. Um, I mean, he, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar, Paul, but um, Eminem is executive producing a movie called Bodied. 
which is about like the new school of battle rap, like how it's you know ba how back in the day, prior to now, there's an acapella format to battle rap where they have no beat to it, and it's mostly you know it's concentrated on punchlines and you know uh, multi syllab you know yeah like, yeah all yeah. that ver all that stuff, and um, basically he's executive produced this movie called Bodied, which is basically showing how battle rap politics you know it's it's one of the places where you know it, it's very politically incorrect like you know, you know it's it it says stuff that is well like you, you know, were saying make... there's there's two gay guys that watch a battle rap show and they have a drinking game where every time, time someone say says faggot, faggot they, they take a shot they take a shot at something or drink of something uh, in the battle like they'll watch the battle make commentary on it and then take a swig if they hear the word faggot and um and but yeah nonetheless it basically this movie's about like how none, none of that shit really applies in battle rap that everything is open game like you could talk about every someone's like mother being a crackhead to fucking you know you know everything from that to you know basically how how politics don't have any kind of real you know sway over it well anyhow it's it, it they have this movie going on. There's a bunch of battles going on here in the states and stuff like that. And uh, all of a sudden, Eminem comes out with the BET thing, and he does that. And he's doing it in the acapella style that a lot of these guys have been doing for you know since the dawn of it, when they would go from street corner to street corner in the city and, and battle whoever's block had the best MC. And he try and a lot of the battle rap is performance. Like you act out like a bar that you're spitting. Like let's say, I say when, when he said, you know, we're gonna build, build a wall, a wall up this high. high. Like, yeah, and he does the jump. Like that's a part of the performance factor of it, and that gets that that like accentuates on the delivery of it, and and fans like that. But I had heard from somebody that he did not entirely do that alone like he that he basically cut a check to a few guys to help him in the find in, in being able to deliver that and and come up with that which makes it i don't know if paul you well, saw yeah because you saw it with snape dog journey clinton election he went on support. yeah well did you see steven crowder and owen benjamin did a parody of the eminem battle thing where well, yeah yeah but the thing is, it wasn't even a good video i mean no. I, i've i'm huh? sorry to offend people i think rap shit in general like obviously it's like all genres of music there is some good rap albums out there but 90 percent of it's nonsense yeah and it that sucks was some now. Of the worst rap i've ever come across in my life yeah, yeah. i could do better than that and i can't rap and this thing, when you started talking like acapella, hitting notes and using syllables to create beats, I was thinking Hebrew. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like, why don't they introduce that where people actually hit notes and actually create a melody and actually create a beat with their voice? It just sounds like theatre mixed with poetry. Yeah. I mean, if, you've, if you watch like an actual battle... They did, they, I mean, that's like a really watered down version of what they would be doing in an actual battle, like what Eminem did. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the thing I... The yeah, but point... surely, like, who thought it out? Like, so, like, we're the Hillary Clinton campaign. They're like, right, we need to get people on our side. Right. Who's the best spokesperson? It's like, well, I know someone that whose mum's a crack whore. Her, his, you know, his wife's a prostitute. And he talks about raping women, murdering women, throwing them in the back of a trunk. Do you think that would be the best person to help the Clinton campaign? They went, yeah, we couldn't think of anyone better. I mean, who <laughs> Bill, maybe, maybe they went, yeah, Bill Clinton, C3. And they were like, no, 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 <laughs> M and M. <laughs> well, the thing, the I mean, thing, seriously, who signed that off? Yeah, I know. Well, the, the thing I was, and that's the, that's the oh, funny no. thing, too. And then, no, it gets worse. Because you have people no, like Keith Oberman gushing over no, it. Yeah, then they signed it off, and then they finished the tape. They would have paid Eminem. Eminem would have gone, look, this is going to ruin my career. It's, it's got my, okay, my career's kind of ruined already. So right. I reckon $8 million for it. And they went, eight mi all right, $8 million. Yeah. So they gave him the $8 million. A Eminem does this tape, sends it back, and they would have gone, he spent five minutes on that. Yeah. 
Well, the other thing you have people you saying have is... Do, and I can't believe someone signed off and went, this is a good rap video. Well, and, and then why play a white dude on bet? Well, the the thing people are saying is... Why it's, is a white dude on bet in the first place? He's basically yeah. Rachel Maddow in a hoodie. Like, he's just using all of Rachel Maddow's talking points. So I, th I think you're right where it's like... It, it must have been someone in the Clinton campaign who was feeding or like, you know... uh. Who who is it? Uh, Media Matters. Who's the who's the guy that was tied in with the Comet Ping Pong? Who's all like, in top of the media? It's the guy's Alphonsus's old boyfriend. Oh, the guy who owns Media Matters. Yeah, yeah. It's basically like he signed off on it mm. because all it is is Rachel Maddow's talking points, and that's why you can have someone like Keith Oberman from from GQ gushing over it, being like, "This is the best political speech of our time." Yeah. Now the point yeah, I, the I know point I wanted disgusting. to make in regard to what Brett was saying, Crowder and Owen Benjamin did this skit where it's like Crowder's delivering the verses as Eminem, but then he runs back to to uh, Owen Benjamin who's dressed like a 1970s 1980s basketball coach, and he's like yeah. he's like you're doing great, kid. You just called the president a bitch. Black people will love it. Like, and it it, it shows almost that like. It was guided. It was given. It was guided. It was given to Eminem. Now I've heard this is pretty much the tone of Eminem's upcoming album. It's no, all right. No, they've got a video of him sucking dick. Huh? They blatantly got videos of him sucking dick. Probably. Yeah. I mean, or you know, my it theory. It does seem a bit homosexual to me. So does Snoop Dogg. I don't know. My gay radar. Doctor Dre. Doctor Dre is. So I wouldn't be surprised if Dr. Dre was yeah. pulling some Weinstein moves. Yeah, yeah. Wait, Dre, he's, he's full-on gay or there, There's always been rumors about Dre. Well, that's always been in the rap industry that it's run by a gay Yeah, mafia. yeah. I mean, you've had Lil Wayne And that's what I mean. I think it's going to be the same with this Weinstein thing. It's going to hit the music industry. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Cat Williams got in trouble a while back because he was doing stand-up and talking about these Hollywood parties. And he was like... Oh, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. like, you go to these <laughs> parties. And he was like... You you could walk by a room and you'd see two of the, the biggest, dudes. toughest niggas you'd ever imagine in a sucking room cock. sucking each other's dicks. Like, yeah. <laughs> and next thing you know, Cat Williams is getting fucking burglary charges for states he wasn't even in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> shit. Then he came out and did a public apology to the Illuminati. I love Cat Williams, man. Holy shit. And you know, even. Yeah. Dave Chappelle has t has talked about this for a while, where he says, you know, it's it's this, it, it, you have to be a strong person to be in Hollywood, and it's, Tupac looked really gay to me. I've said that a million times. Yeah, I, I, to, you know, Tupac. It's funny because he was an actor, and and the Tupac Tupac Shakur it's was a real person. Blatantly not but, a gangster. It's blatantly not. Yeah. 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 He would, he would, he would like do that eh, 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 if he saw a spider in the bath. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't handle a gang fight no way. He pissed his pants. Yeah, but a big Biggie Smalls was definitely. Oh, Biggie Smalls has there. There are lines. Cans, yeah, they're just not alphas. Cans so. pointed this yeah. out to me where there are lines in Biggie Smalls's raps where he very covertly talks about dudes having anal sex yeah and where he's like five double two o, dicks Johnny with Bass. no chick yeah <laughs> <laughs> two dicks with no chick it's and, and puffy shit. puffy <laughs> is the is the most flamboyant fucking i mean puffy is just gay without a doubt there's rappers that come out saying i've sucked p diddy's dick yeah yeah you're right yeah. you're right you also even had Foxy Brown at one point. She came out and she was saying how Jay-Z basically was pulling some Harvey Weinstein shit. And this has been suspected with him and Rihanna and, Numer and uh, Anne Marie and a handful of people. But Foxy Brown came out and said, I was in the offices at Def Jam. Uh, I started fucking Jay-Z, this, this, and that. Next thing I know, this other dude comes in. We start having a threesome. Then next thing I know, they're going at it. And I'm just off in a corner playing with myself. She said, and then a few months later, I turn on the TV, and I see the dude who got involved in the threesome on TV, and it's Jamie Foxx with his own TV show. Oh, shit. So well, Jamie Jamie's Fo going to be right for a career. We should send you to Hollywood, mate. Huh? Nothing. 
Send, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Send, Run that back? Send, send me to Hollywood? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make that career at night time. Jamie goes to Hollywood. Relax. Yeah. He'll do it. <laughs> oh, man. It's, I, you know, it's so funny. Like, I, I've always said for a while, I was telling a friend of mine who's actually in. Would you do it for a proper movie role, Dave? I don't know. Uh, Just one dick. 15 minutes. Just one dick. All right, we talk, we talk in ejaculation in a, the whole, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so the whole bit. 15 minutes max. Do you want to try and get it done as quickly as you can? To get, <laughs> to get, to, to get a Hollywood role. Well, yeah, m- Hollywood with film. money behind it and the whole bit. <laughs> and the I'm going to be honest. If just one dick. <clears throat> for the yeah, whole. just one. For like, I'm talking like making millions off of the role. I'll do it for less. I'm solidified, less solidified icon in in in, the, in acting and stuff like that. If, hey, you know, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Dick. I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I could drum it up. But <laughs> if somebody were to say, hey, you know, this is it. You'll be iconicized and you'll get 40 million. Suck this dick. I mean, Mate, I might I'm have. Cheap. I'll do a dick for ten grand. <laughs> I, I mean, I I've I've been at some so parties at the local uh, local liberal arts school that looked like a scene, yeah. at, like a scene out of Caligula. Yeah, so, uh, Jesus, yeah. Surely you could just block it out your mind, though. It's only gonna take a couple of minutes. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Uh, you know, and I'll tell you what, Paul. That uh, that you know, That's I not think cheap. That's expensive well, I was going to say <laughs> again again think think of it like I think I think you just hit the nail on the head where it's like could could you put you know 20 minutes of time doing something that you might never normally do oh, yeah geez. if you put some effort Great. into it you could get it done in four minutes to change your life though yeah. I mean that's what it really is you know, you what? know when you have some of these people yeah, go get me from... a bottle of wine get me a bottle of wine <laughs> Going from nothing to idols, like, yeah, give me four Xanax bars (laughs) before I do it. Before I do it. If it comes down to that. Yeah, 10 grand, I'll soon forget about that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, soon forgotten. Yeah, exactly. Soon it need to block it. I'll out. just tell people anyway. I just feel like, oh fuck it. Uh, I fucked off. I fucked Robert De Niro for the role. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah Might as well get it right out the right out the way. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. little little Wayne basically came out and came out and Bird said Man, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fucked him. Yeah. And, or you? Yeah, yeah. You had other rappers too in Cash Money where they came out and they said, "Hell yeah, I suck baby's dick for a million dollars." Yeah, like they they, they were seeming they were talking about like they were gangster for doing it. Yeah, they were like, "I'm out these streets, nigga." Hell yeah, I suck that cock. Like yeah, yeah. Man, I I don't it, know if it, I could drum it up. Maybe what, for ten grand. But why why you, is ten? You probably got a decent job. Wait, ten, 10 grand is the is the cap off? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll do it for ten. I mean, that's <laughs> and that's even even lowball though, because like again, you know, a lot of these people like it's 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 not even I don't ten, think grand, 10 grand. It's a cheap prostitute. Like I'd be quite proud of myself. I'd go to all the prostitute sites, looking at all the hot blondes, going, "You charge them what, hundred pounds an hour?" Yeah. I got a, I got ten grand for like five minutes. That's yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. 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 I'll let her know. Pretty good rate. <laughs> but all right, let's. I feel like I've got some sexual market value for one. <laughs> I'd be telling all the girls, going, that would be my chat line. Next time I see a hot girl, I'll say, you think you're hot? (laughs) (laughs) And then she's going to want to have a drink for you. She's going to want to hear that story. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And yeah, you just, yeah, you'll make her laugh so much that she'll never forget you. <laughs> and then you're straight onto subjects of sex straight away with this like mystery woman you just met. Yeah, you're right. It could, it could be a very good it's pickup like, tool. It's a great yeah. You got straight onto talking about your cock within exactly. Like yeah, that that breaks awkward. the ice on that. Yeah, that's where Weinstein's going on. I could teach him a thing or two. I could <laughs> to be. So I got a, 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 step one. <laughs> yeah, when you harass a guy and grape her, you want to make it funny. Like, yeah, exactly. 
Well, and that's <laughs> that's honestly what it seems like some of these stories were. Like, I heard a story about him in the corner of a hotel room jerking off into a plant or something. Like, some of this just <laughs> really? seems, seems so hysterical that it's like, all right. Like, Ag- yeah, agricultural sexual. Yeah. Or, ecosexual. Ecosexual. Yep. That's what it's called, right? It's not right. Harvey yeah, Weinstein, the the fu- pioneer of the ecosexual movement. That poor plant. But anyway, a- enough about about this. But I- I'm I'm interested. Let's talk about Infowars. No, not yet, not yet. I've got uh, to bring out the subject where everyone's gonna go. Oh, not again. Oh, not again. Let's go. Fucking what is going on with Las Vegas? It's getting weirder and weirder. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh shit. Updates just from this week. I don't want to go through the whole Las Vegas thing, so we're probably on the same page. But that uh, that Las Vegas police guy looks like he's seen a fucking ghost. Yeah, yeah. I I haven't Honestly, been. Like, I've seen the headlines mate, he looks that terrified. And then he goes he, his his latest interview, like his press conference. He wouldn't let any press in, and he wouldn't allow any questions. Like no questions, no questions. Yeah. And then his opening statement, like. He goes, there's no conspiracy going on. Mm-hmm. It's like, right, there's obviously a conspiracy. There, yeah. That's your yeah. opening statement. That's your opening statement. There's no conspiracy. It's like when your boss comes in and goes, your jobs are safe when it's opening to me. And it's like, oh, yeah, well done. Yeah, exactly. The, it's like, uh, well, you know, no, nothing is wrong. It's like, uh, but. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. Yeah, no. Yeah, I... and then he goes, there's nothing going on between the casino, the FBI, and the Las Vegas police. And you think, that's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's too, it's too convenient. There's, a, there's... And then not let, and then go, no questions, there's no questions. It's like, what's the point in this? Exactly, exactly. You know, I... And what answers have you got? Are you telling me the FBI still don't have any kind of motive whatsoever? Just yeah. no, no clue. Don't I... they have a responsibility to keep you guys safe? Yeah. Like, what are you supposed to be looking out for? Right. See something, say something. What the fuck are you... Did <laughs> you just see... I mean, what the fuck are you looking for? I know. Well, and now you even had it, you know, you, you had posted that article from uh, Ann Coulter. Yeah, why don't you just all phone up and just all go... Ring, ring, see something, whatever. Yeah. Turn that number and go, what the fuck am I looking for? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I That's thought it. it was interesting that that article uh, Ann Coulter wrote where she basically said, the media is inviting us to to find conspiracy theories here by just their their silence and not giving us anything. Like, the idea that this guy played poker for a living, like... Yeah. That's insane. Casinos would be out of business. Yeah. Yeah. And now I, I was going to say I've been seeing the headlines. And then that... this witness was meant to make a statement. He turned up, one had turned up dead, and in the other one, I thought Laura Luma was exaggerating and overclaiming. But then I listened to her full story, and I have to say I was wrong. He has got a gag in order. No shit. For for who? Yeah, because he, this guy, this guy who was next door or whatever, was meant to do an interview. Yeah. And he was on some uh, late night show doing it. Uh. And then they cancelled it. And then everyone went round his house to knock his door, going, "Why, why aren't you doing it?" And they said, "He's missing." And then everyone pointed out, "Where if he's missing? Why have you still got armed guards around here? Surely the armed guards' job is to keep the guy safe. Shouldn't right. they be? They don't need him anymore then." So you think, the yeah, armed guards are there because he's at home. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> and they're just saying, oh, we don't know where he is. When it, he's, in, he's in his bedroom. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't be there if you didn't yeah. know where he was. You'd be out yeah, looking exactly. for him. Yeah, exactly. Now, Jeez. I was going to say... Yeah, I reckon he's got a gag in order to shut the fuck up. And yeah, and probably. Is, and Pro- the other thing is, they deleted all the... They asked everyone's hand in their iPhones and cameras, and they deleted everything. They yep. deleted all the messages as well. Yeah. We still we've got no no camera footage whatsoever. Just from nothing. the hotel. Yeah, you can't, no. e- yeah, you can't even steal a chip. And the ground footage. If you is... even if you can even smoke a joint in there and get away with it, I'll be well impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and yeah, now now the other thing that slipped. Did you hear the thing where it slipped that someone basically kind of was like, you know, you can't use a service elevator in these hotels without a security escort, and then the reporter was like. Wait, are you saying he used the security elevators? And they're like, No, no, I'm ju- I'm just saying that 
you can't uh, use them without. So I mean, that curveball. Yeah, he got... knows he's gonna have to take dick after the crash going. Each time he fucks up, I reckon he has to take. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he gets so pissed off. Yeah. Questions. Like, no questions for fuck's sake. I sat down in a week. Oh, now, last fucking press conference. I was gonna say. <laughs> I, I've seen, you know, the headlines that the timeline keeps changing and, you know, everything like that. But the, And I haven't looked too deep into it, but I did see the thing where the one girl came out and was like, there were multiple shooters, and then right after that, she ended up dead. Yeah. So, I mean, there is... Not, that's not weird. No. Yeah, no, this is, this is a fucking this shit show. The other show. thing is, is, is I thought that the photos of the guns were apparently leaked from the police and maybe they just threw in the one of the headshot of the dead body because none of the press would run with the headshot. Now they're saying the headshot is real. To me that photo looks totally fake. Yeah. And again I spoke to someone that's been a surgeon for years you're right, if you shoot yourself in the head you don't lack, someone's put that body there Yeah. yeah. Hand like that. There's just no way. Well, and then you also had one of the former hotel employees come out and say that the carpeting in there looks like the media room. It's not one of their suites. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like the guns are just there on display, really. It looks like that's a gun cell. They're yeah. They're yeah. Got their cases and they're all on for show. And it's, the reason he was filming it was because he thought he was doing an FBI stint. Yeah. And Las Vegas, I mean, like as far as like the that place is like the Comic Con for for arms dealers. Yeah. You know, like yeah, and I don't know what it's like in America, but basically, if you've got a private jet, the chances are you don't go through any airport security. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah there's they, uh, they might they might politely ask to search your plane, but you could just say no, I'm too busy. Exactly. Get the fuck out of there. Exactly. And 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 they they'll be like, oh, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll. yeah. Because I know people that work on customs, and so like I know that's a fact. If you're like, and what do they call it? If you're like um, an ambassador, yeah, yeah. yeah. diplomatic plane. immunity. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. And they say we can ask politely to such plane, but we get all these diplomats going in all the time. It's basically your air. Anything. It's like your airplane's and, a floating... And my question, obviously, was, do you see kids? And they were like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I still think it's quite interesting that people are out thinking the brother is actually him. That really? That's yeah, one of their that. tactics, yeah. Where the, the guy there's... That brother's crazy, and the thing is, he's psychotic, too. He's, he's like... That's not how you talk when you find out your brother's just shot up. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. You can't see, not like, oh, 100,000 ain't much. <laughs> I'll be real all the time. Well, he's a gambler. He's a nice guy. He's one of my best friends. Well, and, well, and even... So nice to my mom. Even remember... Yeah, that's, a, that's a pretty damn good Remember the, the first day he came out and he was like, no, he couldn't have done this. This isn't like him. This, this, and that. And then the next, the next day, day he's like... Goes, Oh, yeah, he definitely did this all by himself. He could have done anything. He's a go-getter. This is all him. He's a mastermind. And it's like... Yeah, even though he's never used a gun in his life. He's never used a gun in his life. Yeah. And then he said something like... Um, he, he said something like, My brother was just an arms... Uh, oh, no. Um, I didn't mean to... Um, yeah. I was going to say it was a military thing. It's like, you were going to say, um, Where's the journalist saying, No, finish that statement, you fucking weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> What fucking drugs are you on? <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ! It... Like you I said, I think it's about how rich you were. I think it's gonna end up like Sandy. And Hope. wouldn't the family go with the estate? If his estate's that big, if it was my estate and my dad done it, I would feel obliged to donate the estate to the family's victims. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah, for sure. Well, would especially you really take that yeah. Estate? Of a mass murder, he'd be like, oh, shit, yeah. maybe not. Remember, remember when we performed at the Civic Center here and Escobar Entertainment was there? Oh, yeah, yeah, Pablo of, Escobar's Pablo son. Pablo Escobar's son. I forgot we met him. Yeah, we, pre we performed at our uh, a place called the Civic Center here and uh, in front of, like, thousands of people. Um, and backstage watching us was this guy who was po supposedly Pablo Escobar's son. And uh, he has like a, uh, whatchamacallit, what was it, a record company or yeah. an entertainment company or something? And he was watching us, taking an interest in us and everything like that. And I was like, you know, is, is that Escobar's really his son? And he's like, yeah. And, they, and he actually, all the money that he makes from 
his entertainment stuff that he provides, a certain po portion of it is allotted to all the victims of uh, Escobar when he was killing people down there, you know. Yeah, that's definitely a valid point, though. You know, if you if you had someone who was this multi-millionaire and then went on a killing spree, you would donate the estate to the victims and everything like that. Speaking of Sandy Hook, you know, the, the court cases for that with Wolfgang Halbit are going on, and I thought it was interesting. The thing I think is the Achilles heel of the whole uh, uh, thing, the singing at the Super Bowl, They've been asking the people from the school board and everything like that on record, under oath, do you have any paperwork for this field trip? Who were the Sandy Hook kids that sang at the Super Bowl? Why is there no record of this field trip? Were there no permission slips? Were there no... And the people are just like, we don't know, we don't have anything, we, we don't... And it's like, you didn't pull these kids out of nowhere. Like, well, I think the other big point is just start... We, you're not going to... The biggest point for me is the insurance yeah. that was really convenient that happened on the, and in on the lawn and not in the hotel. There's not going to be any. Uh, you're seeing some people trying to sue now for damages because they didn't check them yeah. properly. But you see, it looks like the hotel really covered themselves for anyone suing them for negligence, and that's why he shot the concert from the hotel. Because so if he killed anyone in the hotel, they'd be able to sue that hotel. Yeah. Yep. It's just really convenient that no one's going to be liable for that shit. It just seems like yeah, really awesome. it's that's that's true. It's a hundred percent true. But it's there's too many convenient things about that shit. Well, you it's know, just, I think it's I, yeah, and it took months and months and months, and then there's no motive. It, if it was yeah, he must have booked that months and months. So how long did it? And they said it took him years and years to get the guns, but nobody knew. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, like, how the really, hell do you not? Well, and I don't know if you saw it because there wasn't a large... And your dad's on the... And it's not the most inconspicuous guy, is it? Oh, my dad's on the FBI most wanted. Well, and that's what I was right. going to say. Not remember his job, is Remember it? the other podcast, Paul, when you were like, Jamie, let me... let me, I got a movie script for you. And you were like, you know, yeah, you got this father. Is. You got this. You got this going you on. Got and a pyramid. Throw in, got yeah, throw in the black pyramid and the floor yeah. 32 oh, and, you oh, know... No, yeah, for, it's like for, and then it gets better. The, the the bodies and the guns and the injuries equals six hundred and sixty six. Wow! Whoa! Yeah, and not uh, not only that, you get the Las Vegas card. You got to put that in a movie script. Yeah, of course. A board game. Where we'll have like the Las Ve the, the, It's got the Las Vegas playing card. It's got the pizza playing card. It's got the <laughs> Pentagon being hit, and then the it's got a Jack and an Ace on the card. Doesn't Jason have a Jack and Ace tattoo on his arm? A giant one. I think Does so. He? He? Yeah, look at the Las Vegas card for the Vegas. Got these two cards. It's an exact match. Of... Uh, I want to be a country and western star. I could do it better than them. Get me a contract. I could do that, dig. <laughs> don't look that different. It looks alright for a guitarist. Looks like an easy gig. Yeah, yeah. It's... Get to wear cool stuff as well. So what? So so Paul, what do you think is the overall? I mean, what? Like I, I guess what I'm asking is like to develop upon. What do you think is if there is a motive or if there was anything or what? What exactly was it that was the mechanism behind this happening? What? What do you think? I think Four Chan knocked it on the head. I think. Hey. Yeah, sorry about that. My mate called me. It's really good timing. Oh, yeah, what sorry. I think went down, I think the 4chan message, which was for what? At 11.59 on the 10th of September. So a minute before... The High left. Incident Project. Yeah, what, what... I think that is deadly on. And the other thing is, is that guy has got loads of contracts with the guys that do all the airport security, that do the... Uh, the X-ray machine. Which I, I was going to add in, Paul. I don't know if you saw it because there wasn't a big big body count. I think only one yeah. person died. But there was a shooting at a Virginia uh, university yesterday where it's like now that can be used as like, a, oh, you know, these places aren't safe either. Now we need these X-ray scanners in the colleges and, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's what everyone's out. saying. It doesn't. That just follows the news. That's what my parents say. They say, "Oh, Americans are so dumb. They're going to have to have luggage shit. They're going to have to be searched." Everyone. 
and that's and everyone's going to go for it. And you're talking a billion dollar contract. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that guy is linked to these. I show you. I should have had the files ready. But that guy is basically an owner of those those companies that do those luggage machines and do those x-ray machines and within 24 hours it wasn't the bodies weren't even cold you had neighboring hotels adopting it yeah so yeah. they had that ready fucking quickly yeah that's a, that's a, so you think it was that 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 was that was 100 like that that was the 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 mechanism that that made that occur in in, in las vegas that was that was I think actually, I mean, I'm a bit, sorry, I've got text so I'm going in and out. No problem. Yeah, I think it's a mixture of things. I think it, looking at it, it was an Illuminati sacrifice. I think it was. I think there was something going on that day where they thought, I'm sorry, but the 32nd floor, a giant fucking pyramid, Las Vegas playing card. You've got a movie script of this guy they know nothing about. It's just a complete surprise he did it. You've got all these cameras set up. They've got no CCTV. Right. And yeah, and it's aimed at Trump supporters. And then you put Trump on the back foot because Trump probably knows it's linked to ISIS and it's linked to gun running. How is he going to tell the American people that the FBI fucked this up beyond belief? And yeah. not only that, we've got no idea where the ISIS gunmen are because right. we let them go. Right. Oh yeah, and we were paying these gunmen probably. Yeah, we've got their bank details. We're still wiring money, but we don't know where they are. So don't worry. Enjoy the next concert. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, because you have all those shady connections to the Philippines and stuff. Yeah, I think it was ISIS. I think when ISIS take responsibility, why would you dis discredit that? Yeah. And Alex Jones, which we're going to get onto later. Alex Jones has problems, but 90% of what he comes out with, he's the only guy doing this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think it's a great project because, they, like I say, they played me like a fiddle, they played Jamie like a fiddle, they played Sandra like a fiddle. Everyone I know is fighting about Vegas now, and you can just throw out this crazy information that comes from the press and just start triggering people's perceptions right well I mean, maybe they are just playing with everybody now yeah well i mean that that was kind of my, my stance from the the beginning though How because i was true now? i've How realized that real? that that's their tactic is it's it's to just create so much info that it all conflicts with everything else. It turns confusing. Yeah, and what do you think happens when I'm having Sunday lunch with my dad and I go on about the 32nd floor, it looks like a gun sting, they got his guns over, and he's just watching BBC News. He goes, you need to go in a mental home. Uh, yeah yeah it sounds like it's too many films it's not reality yeah what's wrong with you bro? i mean it sounds like it's people. almost an oliver stone jfk yeah. type flick yeah you couldn't yeah and then the guy who's responsible for it you couldn't audition a better guy right could you you couldn't no. audition a better brother you just couldn't find a better crazy guy for the brother <laughs> <No. laughs> yeah it's like a fucking clown yep yep He's a, he's a... And then he's wearing a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. I don't know that. if you knew this, Brett. He was wearing a t-shirt? Wait, what, what, what was Yeah, he was wearing a t-shirt, guys. It's a conspiracy. He had a t-shirt on. The, no, he the... had a t-shirt, which was a crisis actor t-shirt, which was the same one that had the contract for Orlando. The Orlando Pulse nightclub shooting? Oh! Yeah. And that shoot Why is the guy in Vegas that guy wearing was a shirt that's Hillary tied Clinton into a place in Florida? Oh, shit. That's how they communicate in plain sight, though. No, it's also a big fuck you to me and Jamie yeah. when we see that. You want to give up hope. You're like, if it's that in your face and people can't get it, why are we bothering then, trying to yeah, wake people up? Yeah. They deserve to be lying. They, we deserve to be shot at. Yeah. I didn't even see the, the that footage or, or anything yeah. like that. That's wild. <laughs> And then you're going to get all the dickheads going, no one died, crisis actors. It's like people definitely fucking died. Man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this, this girl who hope, came out after the fact died. Yeah, My yeah. friend's and cousin died. Yeah, and if, if, the, if it was a hoax and no one died, surely you would embrace it because they're so caring and nice. They wouldn't hurt anybody. Why didn't you read Operation Northwoods 
where they talk about how they want to start a war of Cuba. They openly talk about how from crisis actors dead, blowing up their yep. own ships, yep. killing students on a plane trip. Yep. I mean, it's right there. They've got no problem killing people. No. No, they don't. And I think people need to revisit that document. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I know it sounds like I'm slagging off America in a way, but we're having the same shit in England. It's like every terror attack. It's like, you watch the coverage, and you're like, are you fucking serious? Yeah. 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 Beware. Yeah, there'd be like a behead and the guy's on the run. Beware of a male on the run. It's like, what race is he? Can't tell you. It's like, oh, that's fucking helpful then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What are we looking for? It's like... Just a suspect that's five foot ten. It's like fucking wonderful. People, <laughs> people are expendable. I'll keep my eyes out. Pe people are expendable in that in, the, in what how they look at it. Yeah. Well, and especially for the for the bigger agenda, which is you yeah. Know, I mean, I'm not a gun expert. I don't know shit about guns. But that's not an echo to me. That's like bam, 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 bam. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's like fucking miles away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was like downtown yeah, Fallujah. Gone, that sounds like that's not. It's not reloading much. Yeah, no, I noticed that there wasn't too much of an. I don't intern. understand how he's. That seems to be like a belt gun or something. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, and you know, I guess now to to get into the Infowars bit of it, like I saw that we were talking about before the interview with Paul Joseph Watson and Stephen Crowder. <laughs> Where, I mean, Paul Joseph Watson is just basically out there regurgitating the police statements and the FBI statements and being like, no, this has been debunked, the FBI has told us, you know, this... Yeah, and that fits in with Trump, because Trump's going to say, for fuck's sake, go with the story. Because yeah. Because I can't tell the American public ISIS from the fucking run. So maybe he's told Alex Jones what's happening, he's lightly getting the public used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, Cernovich now is is basically running cover for Alex to sort of just I mean to sort of work at like here you know, here's the interesting dynamic. You have Paul Joseph Watson come out and say conservatism is the counterculture, right? So then they've almost used that as a cover for Paul Joseph Watson to then come out and regurgitate establishment talking points from the FBI and everything like that because they're trying to do it under the guise of, well, this is the counterculture now. So, yeah, we can... It's not the counterculture because... i got to say, everyone knows I'm a big Alex Jones fan. Like, I spent a couple of days with the guy. I love the guy. But I think it's ridiculous to think anyone's perfect and they're going to have their own motive. Yeah. Right. I think Alex Jones has gone too far now with the Trump, with the Israel. I think it's just getting a little bit crazy yeah. now. And you're seeing it have the effect where Kurt Nimmo's gone. Yeah. He was there from day one. Jack yeah. Blood's gone. He was Alex Jones' best friend. He has he a tendency to go off forward. on that, like, tantrum. And it, yeah, but to lose Kurt Nimmo, he was there day one. Yeah, he that's a big was. That's, that's well, a big blow. And he isn't Kurt Nimmo isn't talking nicely about Alex. No, Jones. no. Is well, it, and the yeah. and the thing too is like again, you don't need to be on some fucking alt right jewel, Jews run the world and everything like that, but to just continually just say. Oh, you know, Israel, Mossad, nothing to see here, nothing... Like, the way he's so dismissive of Pachinik... He wrote he wrote an article saying that the last ten dis natural disasters is God punishing America for Israel. Yeah. Do you not read that article? Who wrote that? That's no. on Infowars, that, that the attacks, that the natural disasters hit in America was... To be was in retaliation yeah. from God for not doing enough to hit Israel. And Luke Radowski copied... That on his, he tweeted it out, and he's going, "This is why I don't have anything to do with Alex Jones anymore. What's happened to the truth movement?" No, yeah, Fine, yeah. Man. So I remember Luke Radowski tweeted it out. That's how I found the article. And I know he was. I'm. I wouldn't say like when I say friends, it's loose. Like I've hung around with Luke Radowski a couple of times. We, you know, we've gone drinking together, yeah. hung out in London at Bilderberg. So we talk a bit, and Luke is the most nicest guy he wouldn't say anything so for him to say anything i can't say what i know about luke and alex jones because yeah. it's like a friendly talk but he isn't impressed with alex jones anymore yeah he has nothing to do with him 
Man. And you think you think they were like bread and butter? Yeah. Yep. Wow. And then you saw. I, I mean, Melissa Melton, I talked to her because she does this radio show in the UK, which I used to help out with. So I used to like text talk her during the show. And then, yeah, we became Facebook friends. She got completely harassed by Axe Jones when she got fired. R wow. And she's still being harassed now. He keeps threatening to sue her all the time. And she hasn't got anything to sue for, so you just think that's just vindictive, really. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Dykes also left. Yeah. Well, the same it, Dykes, and, Dykes and Melton, they're married, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I'll tell you what, I love their work. Yeah. The, the videos yeah, they do, do yeah. they don't put out a lot of content because when they put out a piece, it's so... Oh, yeah, it's great. It's so well done. And it's just nice so... Nice and cohesive. Yeah, I mean, it's basically like the the old documentaries Alex Jones used to make. And that's yeah. what I really miss. I miss when yeah, Alex... Yeah, Jones used to be the left and the right are the same. Yeah. So why I get that Trump is doing pretty well but there's some giant problems for trump yeah which just getting completely ignored yep yeah yeah and i mean i'll tell you what i even because of that i even have democrat friends who i don't agree with on a lot of issues but even they're coming out now saying the the anti-trump hysteria has gone too far yeah where they're saying we're not even taking issue with the actual issues we're taking issue with him throwing paper towels into a crowd right. and rather than his policies and, you know, things like that. Yeah, you just think, are we in for the greatest psyop ever? It's, it's, it's taken a different form. I mean, in the 80s, there was, like, a lot of Reagan, anti-Reagan stuff, but, it, like, in the particularly with people who were with, like, in the punk rock and and stuff and stuff in the United States, and they they used to have, but but it, right now it's it's kind of like, I guess maybe because of the internet, maybe because of just how everything's progressed and everything. I mean, it's they're going after him if he if he you know scratches his nose. It's like they have something to report on. Yeah. It's if he says if he has two scoops of ice cream. Two for, scoops. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And it's just it's taking up space. It's not even like. It's just, and I understand the news' job is to find something to report on and shit, but this is just, it's just, it's an, an overflow influx of horse shit. It's just, and I just, I, I can't even watch it. I can't even watch it. And it's like at some point... Because Trump's speech on Iran was terrifying. I don't know how else you could describe it. Like, Trump was going oh, to Jesus. the psychopath again. Like, you can't, <laughs> like, what are we doing? And then the same with North Korea. This just seems like, like especially with Trump, you would think you'd understand that after Syria, Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, we kind of need better evidence that North Korea really are a threat. If you're talking right. about completely wiping it off the map. Right, right. Because who can actually verify this shit? Is it just the White House? Right. Yeah. 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 It's just like the fucking, yeah, the North... It, it's a dick waving competition almost. You just think it's, it's America getting fur for fur in it because he can help the economy all he wants. If if he doesn't control the Federal Reserve, what difference does it make? What tax yep. he does or what jobs he brings? And seriously, what difference does it make if they control the Federal Reserve and you just drop an inflation bomb on him? Right. Right. Well, I mean, I, I thought it was interesting, though, that Trump came out. And again, you know, it's so funny for everyone to be, oh, Trump didn't do enough for Puerto Rico. He didn't do enough fast enough. He didn't do this, this, and that. And it's like, he came out, though, and he said, we might have to wipe Puerto Rico's debt. Like, we might just have to have it be forgiven and, you know, whatever. And it's like, that will do more to help Puerto Rico yeah. than anything else. And it's like... Why don't we do the same for here? Right. That's what Iceland did. Iceland said, we didn't get anything for all this money you claim we owe. Right. We're not paying it. And if you tr think we're going to, we will arrest you. We'll arrest the bankers. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I almost hope that Trump takes his Puerto Rico stance and uh, sends it over this way. But...
Well, what do you think about info? So let's just quickly run for it. So Melissa Mountain gone, Aaron Dykes gone. We lost that. That black girl was fuck crazy. So don't yeah. count that. Anthony Gucciati's gone. Uh, Kurt Nimmo's gone. Jack Blood's gone. Joe Biggs, for whatever reason. Jakari. Oh, what about... Margaret um, Howe, who I was guy. talking to on Twitter what this about week, Wayne she's Madison? gone. Wayne Madison was supposed to be in Washington, D.C. with... Um, doing the info was in Washington. And Trump. so was, uh... His left. What's his name from World Net Daily? Jerome Corsi. Yeah, and they're not talking nicely about Alex. No. They're like, you need to watch out for this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... And to be fair, Melissa's a sweetheart, so is Aaron. Why I kind of, like, trust their judgment. You know, I, I've been kind of saying Melissa. for a you while, though, Melissa Paul... with your kids. You would. I've been kind of saying for a while, though, that I... I Again, I had noticed like a content shift with Infowars where it seemed to be less reporting on, you know, certain, like instead of him reporting on things like he used to do, he just sort of references them right. where he's like, I, I told you there were chimeras being gestated in the wombs of cows at MIT labs and <laughs> this, this, and it's like, okay, okay and... but you're not, you're not covering it anymore you're just covering that you covered it back then like there's i don't see them breaking stuff anymore i don't see them digging i just yeah. see it it's becoming like it's it's becoming a a anti-establishment right-wing version of the young turks yeah yeah totally oh totally it's definitely and you it's mock worthy material yeah like, it's 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 a shame because there was definitely a point in time where it definitely invigorated my thought and and changed I mean, a lot of shit with me personally, my perspective. But now I go and watch it, and it's just a it's it. You can even see it in his demeanor, you know. I mean, I I do think though, thank God David Knight is given his own show, because yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a good news show. David Knight's doing a good job with his with his thing, but the the overall Infowars show, I just I don't yeah. know. Like, I'm not going to go as far as to say Alex Jones is a sign. Alex Jones is a Illuminati show, but <laughs> the show is collapsing a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. and I think part of it is you know again Cernovich tried running cover for him and saying you know. You, you've had on the president, you know, you're regarded in, in a different way now, so you have to conduct yourself differently. But it's in, in some regards, you know, like I was talking about when that guy, uh, Millennial Matt or whatever, was talking to, who is it, uh, Owen Schroyer or something, and they were supposed to quote-unquote debate the Holocaust, and Owen Schroyer just had this, uh, you know, mentality that, if there was a death camp, then all the yeah, details... Yeah, I disagree with you on that. I think that... No, I think... No, I think he fucking checkmated him. He had, the guy was an idiot on the phone, I'm sorry. I agree with you that there's, that wasn't a debate, but the guy asked a stupid question, you're going to get a stupid answer and lose right. Yeah, debate. right. He said the Holocaust didn't happen. The Holocaust did happen. Yes. And he lost. Yeah. That was a stupid fucking argument, and he lost. You know, you know what I've always forward, thought... Was was funny or is funny? If he had said in outfits, I think there's some doubt whether they actually gassed people. The cyanide could have been used for to get rid of lice, and the reason you see all those bodies is because they starved because Germany lost the war. And yeah, it was the Holocaust. It wasn't like a holiday camp. It wasn't Heidi High. Right. Holiday yeah. Camp. But it was fucking brutal. Although, although some of them, you do have testimonials from some survivors that some of the camps weren't as brutal as others where i mean no, you had like they, no that's not what they said they said that compared to being a german in some ways it could be better being there because at least you had a decent hospital at least you had food a lot of the germans didn't even get that no oh. well you know like here here's the thing like you had britain send over a soccer team to play against one of the internal oh yeah they camps. had good sports they had sport they were doing sports they had theater yeah yeah they that's really that's really all hospitals. i'm saying by you know some yeah. of the camps weren't just death camps some of them were were work internment camps and they they had theater no, they and sports they were going to work till death but i mean i i assume that was in the beginning of the war before you know the supplies were running out and everyone was starving to death. The problem is, people yeah, lose Germany track of the timeline. When they talk yeah, about yeah, Nazi plus, Germany, they talk about a 20-year period as if it was a week in time. 
Well, no, the World War One and World War Two are the same wars. You yeah. just got twenty years to take. You get a deadlock in a war. And there's no men left on either side. Right. So twenty years to get for your women to give birth, have some more men, and right. fight exactly the same war. Yeah. And what happened is because Germany pretty much lost so much settlement. I mean, it's hard for me to say it's like they're my arch enemy, especially being Jewish. But there was a German Holocaust probably going on as well. Like if you're a German in Poland, you're you're a Jew in Nazi Germany. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I mean. When you get extremism, it's because the other side are pushed to be extreme. Yeah. Because no I don't know if you did. You see uh, my latest article on the on the website. Every time someone says the word Nazi, I want to kill myself. Yeah, well, I've got some funny news. Do you want to get your Google ready? All right. Yeah. It good. Right, this one I can't believe with Miss California is okay for to give HIV blood. Yeah, so, uh, you blood know. You don't have to tell your partner. What? On the yeah, I didn't tell you about you that. You not heard that? Yeah, I've been talking to uh, Chad Felix Green, who's a uh, a. He's he's been on Louder with Crowder for a while. He Adam, actually you explain it to breakfast. I want to hear his reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and uh, what what they've done is, and again, this is why I've been talking to this guy who's done interviews on Crowder. He's the one I was telling you is gonna uh, proofread my my book I'm working on. Uh, uh. Um, and he's been very very vocal about this because he has HIV, and he did an article even the other day saying it shouldn't be. Uh, a lesser penalty for people knowingly spreading it. And what they've basically done is they, in an attempt to decriminalize, and I have a whole article coming out, coming out about this, um, they've made it now a misdemeanor to, like, you could get a more serious penalty for driving infractions and speeding tickets than knowingly, uh, you know, uh, knowingly, What's what's the word I'm looking for? Um, exposing someone to HIV without telling them, and it even goes as far as to blood donations. And it's and again, it's so funny because I I'm going through. Can I throw a curveball out there? I'm a bit of a dick, but is HIV contagious? Yes, yes, highly. Are I... you sure? Because I thought it was immune. I thought it was down. Like you'd have to be ill anyway. You, you, like if you put HIV in a healthy guy, it wouldn't do anything with it. Yes and no. It, it really, it depends. It's, it depends on a lot of I factors. Thought it's immune. I thought it was a mixture of things that was wrong with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's, that's why. Have, that's like, why a you really know. Bad diet, no exercise. And that's why they say you know people who are doing drugs because that lowers your immune system are more likely to be infected yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. like that. Now here's the problem though. You have stats, and again, I have an article coming out crazy. that it, that lays all of this out. <laughs> and uh, this guy Chad Felix. I can't Green, believe we're talking about it. We're having a debate. Oh, like he shit. he's oh, he's laid this out perfectly, where you have ninety three percent of new AIDS cases go on within homosexual and gay men and everything like that. But since the 1980s, you have had all of these gay advocacy groups come out and try to remove the stigma that AIDS is a gay problem and everything like that. And and obviously, that's why they're doing moves like this, like decriminalizing, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. But at the same point, you have people lamenting the fact, being like, straight people don't think that AIDS affects, you know, gay people and this, this, and that. And it's like, yeah, because your fucking advocacy groups have spent 20 years propagandizing people to think that it's not a gay problem. Like, it's this the re yeah, but wanting it both it's ways. Just, like, we want to be the victims of this, but we don't want you to think that this is a problem of ours. Mm. And it's like, you can't have it both ways. And yeah, yeah California did that. They've also made it oh, wow. where you can be, I think, arrested for using the wrong pronouns. The fuck? So. For the for transgender, you know. What do you get for faggot? Huh? I don't know. What do you get for faggot? That, yeah, I mean, no, that's hate that? speech. Is that level, like, you know, in the third or the fourth? or what, the, that, I mean... This but the AIDS thing is ridiculous. I mean, yeah. it's good that you have people like Chad Felix Smith. Like I was telling him the other day, I I hope someday I'm in, in a position where I can act as brave as he is to come out and say, I have AIDS, I'm a gay man, and this shit is not cool, and this is the, the whole gay political movement is on a, on a suicide mission at this point. Like, and there's just nothing okay with any of this. I'm going to fucking like, go out, take my California shoes off. California should be nuked. 
I'm gonna go take my shoes off and kick fire hydrants. <laughs> Fucking, this is nuts. You have to put this in Google. This is headline of the week. Southwark, which is in London, so London Council, the poster girl that they use for their, like, uh, you know, council leaflets, you know, you should see everywhere, was sacked because she was linked to the 217 terror conviction. Wait, what was that? So type in this, type in this, type in Southwark, which is Southwark, W-A-R-K, all one word, Southwark Council, poster girl, sacked for terror conviction. You have to see this article. This is what London's like on a daily basis now. So they're advertising there as like the modern Muslim. So it's, be yeah. so it's becoming God save the meme. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, That's wild. Willem Bet Gurma rose through the council ranks after being jailed for helping one of the terrorists behind the failed 2017 plot. <laughs> That's our modern. It happens every time we had this Channel Four program, and they have moderate Muslims. They found four of them. They're all extreme as fuck. Yeah, I was gonna say it's, it's like that same Muslims. thing where they did the special. Can't like... just find. Yeah, that's what I mean. People can you be racist? Like each time we put. Oh, I'm not even going there. Right, next headline. We had Sweden. We had that gun battle going on there. I don't know if anyone died. But four people were rushed hospital after being shot in the Sweden market. I'll tell you what, it, it really makes them look bad when they come out with that not all Muslims are terrorists, and it's like, oh, well, you can't even do a special on the Muslim next door without it being a <laughs> terrorist. Yeah. Exactly. Christ. And yes, they do it on purpose. It's like a game. The whole thing's a game. Everything's a stage, and they just do it to wind people up. They go, let's do this program when we make more moderate and get in the most hardcore jihadist you can, and then yeah. just piss off the whole public and make them lose hope, like lose faith, thinking. Oh, well, I mean, I, I sometimes I think that's what they're doing with you know Linda Sarsour and stuff because it's like, how the hell has the it's left... like a cartoon, yeah, yeah. How the yeah. hell has the left embraced this woman who says Israel should be wiped off the map and all of this other stuff? And you know, if anyone else said this, it would be hate speech. Again, I lay all this out in my in my article with both her and Bernie Sanders and how they constantly are attacking Jews and everyone else, and yet the left embraces them. Like somehow this woman is a poster girl for, you know, Muslim feminist whatever, and she came out and said, "I was just a normal white girl until I put on a hijab." And it's like that's the magic of leftist identity politics. Yeah. You you can you could just be a normal white girl and then you throw a headscarf on and suddenly you can call for it's a, actually a Jewish trendy, genocide yeah. and yeah it, it is. is people in Hollywood are wearing that shit like it's it, like well you trendy. you had and to tie this into Lindsay Lo, uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein you know Lindsay Lohan has come out and she's done all this oh I've converted to Islam this this and that she like lives Leave in Indiana. Weinstein alone. Yeah, she said, leave racist. Weinstein alone. And did you notice she still has that fucking fake Middle Eastern <laughs> accent in the video? <laughs> the fuck? Like she is Do you want to hear my Jewish conspiracy? Sure. Yes. I reckon that if you looked at... Why, why did Jews come about in the first place? What? Why would Jews come about in the first place? Why did they even come about? Uh, that, I, that I don't know. Um, well, in regards this to is the a Bible, or... so I'm going to take a guess. We talking in the general, Bible, or are we talking Jews? history? Both. It's in the Bible, and just what was going on before Jews were about. Uh, I, it was crazy town, wasn't it? It's always satanic. They were sacrificing their kid. Oh, Abraham like Sodom and Gomorrah and Babylon. Yeah, it, was and... Like, it was just like Babylon worshiping Lucifer. And they were banging and animals guys... and shit. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it started this guy Abraham who's going to sacrifice his own child, and God goes, hang on a minute, stop this shit, yep. stop killing your kids. Here's and that the became ring. the birth of Judaism. Judaism. It wasn't perfect, it's still a bit shitty, but they came up with the Ten Commandments. Like, give, give humanity a break, like, you right. get it right first time. So they went, right, we need some humanity, and they probably had some kind of war to Satanists. And thank God, I reckon before Jews were about, it was just like hell on earth. It's just, you don't want to be alive. Yeah. And then the Jews took over, and what you're seeing causing all the problem is ancient Babylon satanic ritual. It's, it, that's what rules the world. I think a satanic elite rules the world, and I just think you're seeing the same battle again. 
and everyone's saying Jews, 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 is a complete diversion. And when they go, it's all Israel, it's yeah. all Zionists. And it's like, no, it's not. It's Friends of Israel, which is a group we can identify. None of them are fucking Jewish. Mm. It's like Tony Blair, David Cameron, Bush, like Friends of Israel. Or you've got the Bilderberg group, you've got, count you've got government, that's a problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you even, you know, it's funny. Si I don't think there are these Jews meeting up trying to create a holy land. I think, I think they want somewhere because they're attacked so badly and taken right. anywhere just to be left alone. Yeah. But I don't think Jews are in support of Israel. I don't think you'll find that many. No. I think most Zionists you meet are people like Donald Trump, the Queen. Right. They're not fucking Jewish. George Soros. Yeah. I'm not giving him a Jew card. I'm well, yeah, I, I was oh, even yeah. going to say, you had someone, I want to say it was like... The Rockefellers aren't Jewish. Yeah. I was going to say... The Rothschilds are. The Bush family made their money killing the Jews. Yeah. IBM made their money killing the Jews. And yeah. they, these are the big players. Council of Foreign Relations. And, and they're the ones... Jew, Jew, Jew. And what happened with the Jews is, yeah, they, they, I think they made the world a better place. And then it was still pretty brutal. So they came up with Jesus... That's the 2.0, where they just improved on it. <laughs> and you get Christianity, they're like, yeah, the Jews are still brutal as fuck. Yeah. So let's turn it down for the next chapter. Yeah, because if and you... instead of punishing people with death, we'll just use metaphors. Yeah. Yeah, because if you look at the, the Old Testament, I mean, <coughs> God is a pretty pissed off God. Yeah, because death. everyone's worshipping the golden bull and having these wild parties and killing their kids. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? He's yeah. like, he, he, the creation of the first Jews. He's like hitting the now, reset button on everybody. I will say, though, something that doesn't help and helps feed into the anti-Semitism, and I can say this especially... No, growing... I'm terrified having a Jewish name at the moment. Absolutely terrified. Well, I, I would be, too, living in England. Um, it, It's really that, it's really yeah, that bad it right is. now, Paul? I mean, yeah, because most people are stupid and say it straight to your face that they want all Jews dead, and it's like, yeah. are you fucking Life is serious? The most Jewish name you could ever find. You better come outside and take this horny little Jew on, because I'm gonna pump your head into that concrete. Oh my god! And I'll uh, get in trouble for it. Yeah, I'll get in trouble for it. It works. Like I hear it all the time in the office. I'm holy like, oh, shit! Jews. So I walk up to him and say, "You're not killing this Jew." I'll yeah, I it. I would be scared this being shit. Jewish, being gay. Being a woman, being anything but a Muslim in England right now, Don't I'd be worried. Don't get me wrong, there was a Jewish mafia, and the Jews used to run the place, but I think yeah. that was like, again, I'm probably being biased. Like Jack Spot. Because they just had the highest IQ. Yeah. Um, now, now, one, of, don't. one point they don't, I... Anyway, it's, it's Asian and Chinese are taking over America now. I think the Jews are gone. Yeah. They're no, most, most of the anymore. affluent ones have left for Israel. Um, yeah, Hollywood's China now. Yeah. No, now, I on. I was going to say, though, the one <laughs> yeah. thing, especially in New like, York... It's annoying. Like, um, even if you look at Italy, the Mafia used to be Jewish. It hasn't been Jewish in a long time. Yeah. yeah. The Italian Mafia. They're it's... not even Jews anymore. If you looked at the Mafia in New York, that used to be my family. Like, yeah. I'm meant to be related to um, Bugsy Malone. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Yeah. But, I mean, the whole... They're not Jewish. They're long gone. I just think they're gone. Yeah, the the point I was going to make is, uh, you know, one of the things that I think feeds the anti-Semitism, though, and it's not a sort of Jewish conspiracy thing because it's very prevalent in the black community, too, is you you have it where the way they vote doesn't reflect their self-interest. Like, in right. New York, every Jew is a liberal, and they'll, and they'll virtue signal all the liberal platitudes and everything like that, and then in their homes... They're conservatives. Yes. The the what they they don't practice or they don't they don't practice what they preach. They they live by a very successful conservative, you know, work hard, get an education, everything like that. Values. Uh, you know, get married, stay together, have the mother act as a mother, have the father be the father, and then they'll be like, Oh yeah, single motherhood is great, you know, this, this and that like it's it's it just doesn't match up and they it do the same they find the same thing with that within black families you interview most black women they have conservative values no, they will it's vote democrat with Jewish people because I, i'm not going to name people but they go i hate jews and it's like dude your mum looks fucking jewish you need to check your family tree yeah yeah, yeah. and you've got a really jewish name yeah and then they check it, it's like well well it's like everyone that's white comes from jews yeah yeah. Christians are Jews. I just don't get. 
I'm not saying, I can't believe I'm defending them because I come from a Jewish family. They're a pain in the ass and the religion's stupid. But I don't think they are controlling the world. No. I think it's a paedophile cult, a satanic paedophile cult. Yeah. And they're doing all this Babylon stuff. And, and yeah, it's been, this war's been going on for a long, long time. Sure. Since the beginning of, well, Jesse, you know, Jesse Lee Peterson kind of breaks it all down. And this is how I, I look at the world. And I try to tell people, if you don't constantly, day in and day out, feel an internal struggle in yourself between good and evil, you're you're not even alive. Like you you are not even you know conscious of how the world works. But it can just be boiled down into the principles of good and evil. Like and it's the the uh, you know the it's the Bible quote about you know we don't uh, argue with uh, flesh and blood but yeah. against principalities yep. or whatever. And that's what it really is. Where it's like you have to first be aware of what evil is in order to then fight it. Right. And I think most people aren't even aware of the what evil, the and is. that's why they don't have that internal conflict and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. Where it's like, I mean, I have it even to the point where, like, you know, because I'm aware of subliminal messaging, neuro-linguistic programming, and all that stuff. I don't where think it's, like, it's any different saying I hate all Americans because of what Americans' foreign policy is like. It's like, the American people have no fucking control over it. Same with the British. It's like, we went to the Iraq war, everyone was against it, it still yeah. happened. It's going to be exactly the same in Israel. I guarantee the Jews are pissed with their government. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it seems to be America's testing ground for weaponry and... Yeah, yep. They, and they, they, trying to police state and getting... I think Israel do control Hamas and Hamas is ISIS. Yeah. Uh, the same thing. And you've got this controlled enemy, which means you can have more security. Yeah, I just think... It, I think it's it's ahead of its time. I think we're going to see the same shit in Europe soon. It's going to be the same. We're going to have all these gates, all these walls to keep us safe. We're going to have armed soldiers everywhere keeping us safe. Yeah. Yeah, Isra Israel is definitely the testing ground for a lot of stuff. I mean, with the, the newer... when I remember when they had the black helicopters, one of the first places that they tested it out was in Israel. If you ask anybody like uh, the, the, the German Shepherd, that dog in particular it responds very well to Israeli commands. I mean, like, yeah, and who was the guy that read out the list of the seven countries that he was told the US were going to bomb and then denied it? Oh, yeah, episode? yeah. Who yeah. Was that guy? He said Syria, Afghanistan, Libya, Iran. Well, what, what do you see Israel attacking? It seems like Israel seems to be a good point for where America can hit these people. I mean, yeah. they use Israel to do the airstrikes on Syria. They're going to use Israel against Iran. Yeah. Paul, you want to you hear a... Uh... Kind of off topic, but funny headline I just came across. The Independent just just tweeted this out. That's a great paper. How the teachings of Islam could have prevented sex abuse scandals with in regards to Harvey Weinstein. Hey, whoa. Yeah, because anything goes in Islam, it wouldn't be a crime. It wouldn't be a scandal. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. It would just level the playing field. Like, why aren't you raping your wife? And your kids? Yeah, exactly. Like... The, it's like, wrong. what's wrong with you? It's like, holy Jesus. Man. British couples too stressed to sleep in the same bed, study finds. <laughs> One in four couples don't sleep together. Yeah. And then it was talking about how there's other articles just showing how men and women aren't even dating in the UK anymore. Wow. Which I can agree to. Wait, so men and women aren't dating in in the UK, period? Like I haven't dated in 10 years, so it's yeah, impossible. Yeah, no, the, the whole really male-female dynamic it's over there has been destroyed. Like I said, yeah. you have it where, you know, a man trying to come on to an attractive woman is viewed as sexual harassment. There's a good chance that could happen. And also, if you like to go and you went on the first date and you just said, hey... I'm not saying we need to get married or engaged or anything, but it has to be exclusive. Like, you can't be dating anyone else. Right. Well, you can. You can date whoever you want, but I'm not dating you if you're dating somebody else. Right. And then they'll go, what, you're so controlling. It's like, right. Okay, well, yeah, I had seen, seen articles in, in England about how they were trying to, like, push people towards it's that being like... It's not men's You'd think it's men's No, I'm free. I can fuck who I want. No, yeah. Free. 
Yeah. That's viewed as, you know, <laughs> women being independent and everything like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I well, that's why you see all these women in clubs in large numbers. It's because they go to the club and leave their boyfriend at home, or their boyfriend goes out with their mates and does the same. Yeah, yeah. And I even saw actually a thing where you have a rise, especially among the younger British males, where like they, they like I remember seeing a whole a whole article on it about like how young British males are becoming more and more affectionate with each other and call, I forget what it was called, like bro cuddling or something, where it's like because, yeah, I do that. because they're yeah, too I've afraid that, they're, they're too afraid yeah. to, to approach women and just snuggle with yeah. them, so there's, I mean it's like, it's almost like you ha when you would have like sailors that are out at sea for so long that I mean, eventually they just end up hooking up with each other and it's not even that yeah, they're gay I wouldn't say they're I'd just, go that far, but bros need like help and they need love and you need to give them a hug because i don't know about snuggling up that's like right right, right yeah right. but that's yeah. what's going on though where you'll have like college age straight men just kind of laying in bed cuddling watching movies together because they're too terrified yeah that's probably going a bit too far yeah they're they're, they're too you know terrified of women because you could say hey how are you doing beautiful and next thing you know that's sexual harassment, harassment. yep I, you know, and one of my favorite things to do, and I know that this is terrible, is like, I'll just look at a girl and I'll just say, gorgeous. I'll no, just that's say, where you're doing it wrong. You're doing it, if you're completely creepy and completely, you know, yeah. do something completely rude, yeah. that'll be accepted and seem like alpha and the thing to do. But <laughs> if you were nice and gentleman liked it and explained why you find her attractive and hot, then that would be deemed harassment. Yeah. Because actually the nice guys that get hit with this harassment and the yeah. absolute jerks, they wouldn't dare say that because they'll just get checkmated by the guy. Yeah. 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 It's, it's... He would stand, the alpha guy that's like really rude would stand up for himself, I guess, and the weak guy would like back down. Yeah. And, um, you have to carry on without me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What's going on with that fridge? Oh, I'm moving it tomorrow. Oh, cool, safe, yeah. yeah Just because I've got, um, I'm going to put this place for sale, so... Are you? Yeah, so I don't want... Yeah. ...pages and shit. Alright. Yeah. Alright, you good, though? Yeah, you alright? Yeah, man, all good. Good luck with your sale as well. Cheers, mate. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm being a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my neighbour made the show, at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I flooded the kitchen. Holy shit. Yeah, so my fridge is outside. Oh, yeah, they, mm. they, I hate when that happens. Yeah. Oh, man. Wasn't my best move. I, I, man, that's crazy, because I always want... I, there was a girl that I was talking to over in London, and, um, of course, you know, it would never have, have turned into anything because there's no way I would be able to... That that relationship would have never worked, but uh, she, I, I, I would always bring up, oh, like, just joking around, yeah, we'll go on a date when when I uh, make it across the pond, and and she and to her it was like almost a foreign idea, like yeah, going on the, yeah, I've spoken to loads of women who are like, let's just say under twenty three, because I'm quite old. If you say, have you ever been on a date? They'd be like, no. Yeah. Yeah. It's only been like hookups and stuff like that. Or you've never been on a freaking date, and I'm like, no. no. I'm like that is so sad. Yeah. I, I, I felt bad for this girl, and she was closer to my age, she, you know, I'm 33, she's uh, 31, and uh, she, she the idea of it was, like, foreign to her, because, like, it was like, she's like, oh, I wish, I wish someone would, uh, you know, do that with me, or whatever, but nobody has, what the hell are you watching? <laughs> uh, some fucking, oh, some dude, YouTuber M &M fucking mocking Eminem, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, this, I, she, but then next thing you know, I'm seeing on her Instagram and stuff, she's basically hanging out, taking, she's like one of those retro chicks into like, uh, what you would call pinup style, and uh, she's, you know, going, she's like, oh, I'm in, you know, Morocco with, or I'm on a yacht with some dude with a mustache. And very posh. Very posh, you know, and she's getting dug out and everything like that. That's basically, she's used to just meeting up with a guy and fucking, and then that's that. And it's like, but uh, the idea of, like, actually the, the process of courting, 
taken out on a date. The whole thing is just, you know. I'm going to sound really depressed, but it probably happens to other guys. But where you just give up, it even affects your other aspects of your life because you start thinking, what's the point in really having a career? Then? Well, I, I don't know if and you what's ever. What's the point? I don't know if you ever then, saw the video, Paul. There, you know the ones where they'll take someone's uh, speech and then they kind of draw out cartoons to illustrate it. There's a really good one called "The Inevitable Collapse of a Feminist Society," and it goes through all these studies where it basically shows that the um, sexual repression and courtship and all of that basically leads men to build society in an effort to court women oh. and that's what you're saying where when they give up on courtship they then give up on being proactive towards yeah i have you know a lot of my friends have as well like they're not intelligent enough to figure it out god you know bless them but the yeah. thing is why would i get a job yeah yeah they call me lazy but why what's the point point? and when you mean women it makes it harder they go paul what do you do for a living it's like well i don't have a job and they're like why don't you have a job paul it's like well because i don't want a job and they're like oh, they're like offended but like why don't you want a job it's like don't need one do i because it's just me by myself yeah i've got to look after myself so i don't need a job for that right right that's kind of how yeah i don't need a job like if i had a girlfriend then yeah it'd be motivation to get a job and to do well because yeah. you've got someone supporting you any idea is to get enough money to have a family or something or be stable but if right. it's just me why would i get up at nine o'clock in the morning come home at like some ridiculous time yeah. for what yep yep because i'm not going to be earning that much more just sitting at home than what i would get a job and yes i've really worked really really hard yeah so why don't I just do nothing, and then all my bills are paid. I'm not living a life, don't have any security, but yeah, what's the point? And it ends up getting really depressed, and I think it's the same way people are getting fatter and fatter and bigger and bigger, because there's no need to really keep yourself looking good, is there? Well, yeah. and you know, that's, that's the other thing that sort of is really funny about feminism and all that, where it sort of has taught women the way to rebel against the patriarchy is to just sort of be like corporate borgs where it's like oh yeah just be a just be a super materialistic cunt and you can measure your worth. your your worth through materialism like, yeah but then you're just going to be trading up so why would you commit 20 go because it sounds like with you and they meet someone with more money better job yeah 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 and again i'd be better off just not getting a job in the first place and not being heartbroken Makes, just, yeah. like, I reckon more men in the UK are turning to Xbox. You can see the studies than girls. Yeah. Men would rather have a night in with an Xbox than a then with a... And I'm finding that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Jeez. I mean... And, it, and I'm not hating on women, but it's difficult to find a woman you can just have a conversation with about something Yeah. Normal. No, it's, it, I, same, same deal here. You know, it's uh, <laughs> like... Uh, uh, Every date that I've gone out on, it's almost like I'm talking to a cardboard. Chinese. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's like I'm speaking Japanese. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I'll i use words that aren't even that big of, like, words, but, but the definition, they don't know, it goes right over their head and everything, and my intelligence is ultimately a turnoff. Yeah, I was going to say that, where I've had girls... Once they, once they become aware of, like, again, the stuff I know about language and neuro-linguistic programming and everything like that, I've, ha I've had a girl go to me and say, I've never had a guy speak to me the way you right. do, this, this, and that. But it's it's there it worries them, where they almost get to a point where they're like, I don't know if I've... Like, they're, they're intimidated by the intelligence, especially because they're told... Boys are stupid. Women are better than men. This, this, and that. Right. So if there, so if you're a man that a girl's like, oh well, I can't, you know, keep you under my thumb. They, they, they want subservience. They don't want a partnership. Right. They don't, they don't want to look at it as like, oh, this guy's really smart. You know, he'll protect me and you know help uplift me and everything. They want someone below their level in some yep. cases. The... No, it's not that. What they do is our friends say an intelligence guy and then still fuck. The yep. other guy, and then expect the intelligent guy is so desperate they'll stick around and say, "No, fuck that." Yeah, <laughs> yep. I mean, that's like that's. Basically... I've had to do that to loads of women, like lo like every single woman I meet now. It, 
And not, not blowing my own trumpet. They're like the same thing. It's like I've never spoken to someone like you before. They spend hours and hours on the phone. They always want to talk to you. And when it says, oh, do you want to have sex? They're like, oh, do I fuck? And it's like, well, right. see you later then. Yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, basically... They friend zone you. That's... I mean, that's how, basically, I got out of... I almost yeah, but that of, means they're lying to you, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because they say that they, all the qualities are there with yeah. you, but yeah, yeah, so they're lying. I mean, the minute that I was talking about going back, or the minute I was talking to the college about getting uh, reinstated and everything, was the minute that uh, my ex girlfriend decided it was it was time that we break up because I was going back to school and I was and and whatnot. She was, uh, that was... Threatened in, by the idea of you being successful. Threat, yeah, threatened by that idea. But meanwhile, not realizing that, you know, what's go good for the goose is good for the gander. If I was going to back to school and working a job and everything, I'd be able to get some upward mobility. And, you know, you don't think that you're going to... I'm going to... Sh you're going to reap the benefits of that, but it's competitive. Like, the, she looked at it very competitively or felt threatened by that i don't know why but yeah i'm sorry to hear it as well ah uh, that's all right it's a better option i think that's the other thing with intelligent guys the good guys know that heartbreak's hard to deal with so they don't even want to take the risk because yeah the yeah I... against you so badly to begin like i know relationships take work but you look at the numbers and like they ain't fucking good yeah yeah no i don't even i i'm i mean i've i've had a few hookups and so forth but i've not i'm not even i'm scared to even be in a relationship after that after you know the unpredictability yeah, I'm of that. Terrified, yeah. it's, it's it's scary as shit because you don't know what like it, it's like what's gonna happen and everything like that it's and like, it's becoming more epidemic because as you see like in england the single mums is through the fucking roof Oh man! Like yeah. most women you see over a certain age will be single moms, wow. and you wonder what that does to their their kids. Like most kids I know now who are like in their twenty, I call them kids. I'm quite old. Like people that are under twenty two. Yeah. Most ones I speak to were just brought up by one parent, and it's like completely weird that two parents would bring somebody up. Yeah. Well, I remember even. I don't know if it's like that bad in America yet, but no, I parents, remember even that you know, even that as a but, kid where it was like. You know, it it took me a while to become comfortable with, you know, my father being a sperm donor and everything like that. But when I was in school, I realized all the other kids around me, they had, you know, single mothers as parents. They were all kids from the projects and everything like that. And it's, you know, eventually I realized, you know, because I, I had had people come to me and they were like, oh, your, your mom had you with a sperm donor. You were wanted. You were an investment. You weren't like these other kids where it was like, you know, some baby daddy, absentee father, whatever. It's like exceptional. It was, yeah. And, and I mean, it is like that over here. Um, I just want to bring up my friend Dave just sent me an article. It came out that during Bill Clinton's sex scandal... Harvey Weinstein was helping pay his legal fees. Wow. It says, Hollywood was quick to come to the president's aid. Among the 62 donors giving the maximum of $10,000 were performers and directors such as Tom Hanks, Barbara Streisand, Michael Douglas, Ron Howard, Norman Lear, Steven Spielberg, uh, Kate Spielberg, as well as studio executives Jeffrey Katzenberg, David Geffen, Harvey Weinstein, and Bud Yorkin. So oh, they're all in on shit. it together. What a fu what a shit show. So it's I think it's a brilliant. I think you're gonna see <laughs> Hollywood fall. Like it's all gonna go. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be like a game of jungle. That's just gonna collapse. It's just gonna go. And now you've got David Geffen. Like I say, you've got the music people in there. David Geffen. No shit. Yeah. Yep. That's music industry. That's Guns and Roses. That's like the biggest. He's yeah, that was his ca that yeah. was his cash cow. Put man. out Nirvana and all sorts of stuff. Holy shit! That's, a, I mean, now he's roped in. Didn't the Poison shit? Singer come out with some stuff about being abused and shit? And oh, the Slash Poison was Singer. Be in poison. Yeah, because Slash was going to be in Poison. Right, right. But he was too good looking, wasn't he? So now you're too like rough for Poison, and he ended up in Guns N' Roses. No. Oh. That that makes sense. That totally makes sense. It's uh, holy shit. That's uh, 
Oh my god. You yeah. know, the other thing that really bothers me about this fucking thing is Harvey Weinstein now, but, oh, he's in sex rehab. Same thing they did with Anthony no, Weiner. Sex, like, yeah, the reason you go to sex rehab is to get a lower charge when you're convicted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, although Brett was telling me... Yeah, it would be used as his defense going, look, he's been convicted, but he's trying to fix himself. He's already been to rehab and said, I'll go all right a few, a few less years. Brett, Brett was telling me that I guess in some of these uh, these rehabs, though, it's basically like, you know, when you go to a drug oh, rehab and they're like, yeah, 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 oh, we're, yeah. we're getting you off heroin. Here's methadone, where it's like in the sex rehab. They're going there to have sex, right? Like, yeah, but the prostitutes are more like um, stimulating. Counselors. Like, uh, but yeah, they're like more softy going, don't rape me, be soft and gentle. When yeah. You yep. The, one, of the, one of the things that they implement in those sex rehabs is something called uh, dry humping therapy or a dry humper, which is basically... We need to book in, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's booked in. He he's got man, what a hell of a job. I mean, he. <laughs> I mean, wonder what the prerequisites. Yeah. Are. How many dry humps have you had? How many times have you busted without you know stuff like that? But anyhow, um, yeah, the way that they do it. To Most nights now these days. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it, the. The, I guess up against the couch. Yeah, against the couch. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> But if they're like, I guess they bring in the dry humper to like, if they're they have people there that are like bemoaning or like really need like something. It's like the that's like their no, methadone is the dry they have humper. They You gotta have some foreplay. Like they try to because no, no foreplay, foreplay. And you gotta do that for at least like five minutes. To yep. Start with. And yep. Then you have to sex. Just go no slower, slower. And then afterwards you have to cuddle and talk. Yep. Shit like that. Yep, it's a, yeah, it's uh it's it's interesting. Like what? Uh, what you bring fuck? in that dry hump therapy. <laughs> Is there any light at the end of the tunnel? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's an oncoming train. I mean, I think you know it depends what will what will stand in the place of Hollywood after it all collapses. Are you still up for just running away in March? I'll pay for the house. <laughs> hey, you know part part of it though. Like I, I, I honestly, I don't. I understand do if you were in like England work, wanting to house. leave there, but I don't. I don't think America's in the shape where you you need to to run for. I mean, I want to get out of New York, but I right. still think America is probably. One of the best bets as in. far as somewhere to be. Yeah, it's it is the best bet to, as far as where to be. Yeah. Not on my budget, it isn't. I mean, I think it really, you know, it it depends, especially with Trump turning around the economy and everything like that. By the end of eight years, things could be really good over here. Sure, sure. There's there's a. I mean, I'm I'm seeing more and more in the field that I'm in. There's openings for jobs just opening up left and yeah. right. Yeah, and it's. I mean, it's, even even my friend Dan, you know, he got fired from his job and the next day hired somewhere else. Yes, yeah. yeah. Like that's. In, I've been getting job offers from other places and stuff. Not to. I actually I shouldn't put that out there, but disregard that. But nonetheless, uh, yeah. allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, it's you know it's. It's no, uh, it's no coincidence that right now the field that I'm in is is becoming more and more, you know. Guys, I've got to go. I've got to love you and leave you. It's nice meeting you. Both, ah, right. Though. Nice meeting you. Yeah, man. Bells going. People are going crazy. Yeah. I was gonna say we should probably wrap it up anyway, because this being two hours, it's gonna take a while to fucking export yeah. and stuff. But yeah, I. I doubt anyone's still listening. I'll I'll probably chop it, upload it into two sections and stuff. Do do a full version and then clips as well. That's good. I don't feel so crazy once I talk to you. Like when I'm at home all, all week by myself, I just think maybe I'm just fucking need some medication. I'm just going mental. <laughs> it is normal <laughs> out there. 
No, you're you're no. you're awake, and that's that's what it. Yeah, and, and you know, Paul, that's the other thing that really bothers me. I have friends online who will do all this talk about, oh, white people have higher IQs, IQs, you know, the sort of alt right talking points, and I just look at them and I go. You obviously don't have a high IQ because being intelligent and awake and aware is a state of uncomfortable. Like right. it's not, it's yeah. not easy to get through the day to day being. It smart. all started with me. I remember when it all started. I started to learn hypnosis and I started to read body reading and like how to tell the truth. And as soon as I could read somebody quickly, my life fell apart. Mm. Mm. I think. Yeah. So sad, isn't it? I shouldn't have read those books. <laughs> yeah, and then I came to a conclusion the biggest liar and hypnotist on the planet was that TV set. It's the greatest hypno hypnotist you've ever seen. Yeah. Yep. And then that's how I got into politics. I still want to see how it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should do something on that for a show. Teach people basic hypnosis and how to speed read people quickly. You know, it's I th I think it's good for people to be aware of those things because then you can be aware which thoughts are your own. You know, I had it where I told you last week I was listening to a song over and over and I kept thinking about how much I wanted to bang the singer who wasn't my yeah. type. But then I paid attention. That's always been my job. That was my last job. I had to go talk to clients and then tell my boss whether I thought they were full of shit or not. That's yeah. Been my last couple of jobs was just. I know it sounds like I wasn't doing it, but that's what I was doing. No. Carl was sending me to talk to big people and saying, "Does this guy's story add up?" And I'd be like, "I don't know for sure, but eighty percent of it tells me he's a bullshit artist, and this is why. This is why. This yeah. is what I was asking him. This is why he am." Yeah, I don't know. I think I got it from my dad, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. But then I don't understand why other people don't do it. It's like they don't want the truth. Yeah. Right. It's, ignorance is right bliss. Questions. Yeah, they don't even plan, like, what answers would you expect to get if they were lying? Right. Uh, you know, I even had it this past week when I wrote up that article, because uh, the article was inspired by a conversation I had with a friend, and then I, I he wanted to see the article, and I was like, you know, I really, I don't want you to read it, because he doesn't, he's never outright said his politics to me, but he's a gay guy who's into theater, so I assume he's a, I assume he's a liberal. Although he seems to be very, just sort of neutral and you know aware. aware. And I mean, he spends lots of time around me, so obviously he's not crazy. Because I would assume a homosexual in theater would think I'm literally Hitler. Um, <laughs> but I mean, even when I was like, you know, I'll send you the article. I said, but I, I, you know, ignorance is bliss. And I don't want to, like, it, this is an article filled with uncomfortable truths, and I don't want you to be uncomfortable. I said, and now I'm being a douchebag by saying I'm trying to shield you from reality. Right. So, here it is anyway. Nah, fuck it, you know? Like, but it's, you know, I don't know. It's, it's very difficult knowing all this stuff and trying to conduct yourself daily, especially around people who just don't want to know. Right. But all right, well let's get let's get going, man. And I'll Whoa, start start it was getting nice this up. meeting you. Oh, I think I think he call failed. Is that? Yep. All right. All right. Thank you for having me, sir. Yeah, yeah. Of course, Brett. Anytime. Yep, yep. I know I didn't have too much in the way of anything <laughs> interesting to say. I just was interested in sitting in on the convo. More more perspectives is always good. <laughs>